I'm down for this. All right. Sm small okay. break. When okay. we come back, small break. Billy will be on Mad Honey. Let's do some Mad Honey. Let's I didn't see. like really f feel the effects for like an hour, an hour and a half. Is so this legal? You'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Macro Dosing. Um, PFT is out, and uh, we have replaced him with the original shade wearer and in podcast hosting. That's Donnie. Donnie, what's happening, baby? How you how you living? I'm living good. Just got back from Nepal. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Let's cook. Let's cook, let's cook baby. Let's go. Well, you buy you buy the 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 most infamous chef. At Barstool, so we about to we about to cook. Billy's yeah. in the studio. What's up? Uh, big Big T is Big T that can you see? Big T yep. is there, of course. Okay, Big T there, Mad Dog, Mackenzie, full squad except PFT. PFT guys handle some bids, so uh, he'll be back next um, next nano dosing to my knowledge. Good show lined up today. We gonna have we gonna talk about world. Um, what's that shit called? Wonders, Wonders of the world. <laughs> World Wonder, that shit. I just, my mind just went blank. Holy shit! Uh, wonders of the world today, but um, we gonna shoot the shit for a little bit. And I gotta start first and foremost. Jamie Foxx in the hospital for some reason. Don't know why. Don't really care to speculate as to why. I think he's been there for like three weeks or something like that. What his family yeah. said. And I just wanna wish him, wish him well, man. If you, if y'all some praying people, I personally am not, but. It can't hurt, right? So go ahead, do your thing for Jamie, man. That's that is the most talented human being to me that has ever walked the earth. His what he has done in the entertainment industry is just unmatched, and it's just I'm a big super fan of uh, Jamie Fox, man. Got a, got a chance to meet him, cool dude. Um, yes, yeah, so we wish him well. Um, I don't know if anybody has any words for him. Y'all go ahead. I think Dr. Dre was in a similar situation. And thankfully pulled out so hoping for the best for jamie fox well we you don't know, really even know what the situation jamie fox is in right from what like, i read I, it was similar to what dr dre would have with dr dre okay what'd you read billy i, I, I read he had like a, a stroke of some sort okay really yeah i don't know yeah. it's uh it's, it's, his family has not really divulged it um and so it's a lot of speculation so who knows that could be true could not be true but just wishing well dogs um, the other big important news um, is that the Lakers are up 0-1, and so my Lake show is doing well. Like I said, I ain't, I ain't really been on the on the basketball watching tip this year. I've been watching a lot of golf, but I've always been a Lakers fan, and love to see it, man. Love to see the Warrior fans getting all upset. Brown, Brown doing his thing. Man, this is a this is a good week. This week has been a good week, man. It, like it. it just like feels that. like. Everything's breaking that way. If AD stay healthy, it's hard for them to lose because they play so well together. Like AD's playing really well. Bron, I don't think I hate to be that guy, but I don't think Bron is like going to be the factor that he was in in his previous championship runs. You can see he's kind of like gas, but he and he plays kind of like old man ball, like you know, post you up type shit by the hole. But um, I mean, he, he's playing out of his mind for his age and shit. But I think I think AD is the key. If he stay healthy, they they, they, have, they have a nice squad, man. I, I like the squad, young. young like young if squad. they win this them, series, they'll play the Nuggets, who are better than them. But LeBron in the Western Conference Finals. Then if you get past them, you've got maybe the Celtics. I'm not convinced of anybody in the East. I think all the teams in the East are kind of bad. Gonna be interesting. They got a shot. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. They, they got a shot. I, I honestly don't think this series is gonna be as close as it was. I just don't. Uh, I, I think it's gonna end up being four two. I think they carry LeBron. I can see the NBA carrying LeBron back to a championship. Oh, I mean, if it's Here if it's a game seven, game, you know who's getting those calls. Yeah, I, I predicted Celtics Lakers final at the beginning of the season just because I knew that was the best rated final that they would want did you place a future on that no okay because i don't i'm not as in tune with the nba to actually make those decisions arian have you ever met lebron 
Yeah. Well. <laughs> As a LeBron stand, how is like like meeting LeBron? Out of the Brown stand. What you say? Right. You're a big Bron guy. My, I'm a LeBron fan. He's one of the greatest basketball players ever lived. Of course, I'm a fan of what he has done. I'm not a stand dog. Like that's a big difference. I, I was okay, a Kobe that was a little stand. aggressive. That was a little I was I was a, I was a Kobe stand, and meeting him was a moment for me. I always tell there's three people. If I met them in real life, I'd be like starstruck. Um, well, not starstruck because like yeah, I've been around it, so it was, was kind of it wouldn't be like crazy. But I would just be like, yo, I'm a fan dog. Like, and Kobe was one of those cats. Absolutely, I met him. It was amazing. Who are the other like, two? Brother, like, the other two is Jay Z and uh, Jim Carrey. Hmm. That's a good list. Not a bad list. That if I was like, you know, like starstruck, like because I don't for whatever reason too. I, I just love Jim Carrey. Other than his old anti vax bullshit, like I just love his brain. Like I love his brain. I always yeah. wondered if you just walked around Tribeca, New York long enough, you would run into Jay Z. Because <laughs> apparently, like, I don't think so. him, him and Beyonce, like, go out to their favorite pizza place there all the time and stuff. Oh, do they? I, I figured yeah. they was. Is it Ruby Rosa? Uh, I don't know. They definitely move with ton, like enough security, plain clothes. Well, I was just reading a story about Donald Glover. He was he just ran into Jay Z at a pizza place, and that was their first time meeting. Whoa! Yeah, I see posts all the time of like big time celebrities that are just right, like right around the corner from my apartment. I never leave my apartment, so I don't see them, but I see posts of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean New York's a very easy place to just mm -hmm. sort of blend in with the crowd, unless you're like Shaq. Or Zah. Yeah, Big T, you're in like Celebrity Central where you live. Yeah, like there's a bunch of restaurants that they all love and stuff right around where I live. Hmm. Uh, did I tell y'all Donald Glover was filming something outside the office like a week ago? Yeah. Um, I, I did a spin cycle or spin class with Donald Glover over the summer. Yeah, I walked I out to that. go home and he was Just right standing outside. there? I think I someone took a video of him on 7th, like running. Donald Glover is, that's the. Childish Gambino. Okay, see, I get him confused with Danny Glover. Yes. Dif yeah. Different. <laughs> I get yeah, it. yeah. Isn't Danny Glover, this is going to sound so stupid, isn't Danny Glover the guy from Angels in the Outfield? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great movie. Gr absolutely great I remember movie. Him, I, I've seen him, I don't remember him being in it, though. He absolutely could. I just Wasn't he the manager in it? Yeah, yeah. You don't remember him in that movie? And they go. I thought he was not, that, he was a rookie of the year. Is he still alive? He, I don't oh, think he's no, in Rookie of the Year. I think he's in Rookie of the Year. Let's, come on. No, Danny let's. Glover is definitely in Angels in the Outfield. Uh, I'm getting my baseball Danny moves. Glover is alive. He is 76 years uh, old. Let's go. I, Might not be for much longer. <laughs> I mean. Stop, don't say that. Uh, Stop. Damn, y'all done killed yeah. Danny Glover off, man. Right. This, hey. <laughs> How's Jimmy uh, Carter? Jimmy Carter's still doing great. <laughs> is he, he was. Out? I don't think so. We this we need a ticker. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> days till that nigga kicked a bucket. Danny Glover <laughs> was in Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. Who was he in Rookie? Oh, hang wait, on, wait. hang on. Don't in in Rookie of the 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 Cubs movie. On, I, yeah, I might have I might have I might have fucked up. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Which one? Is that the one about the young kid? Yeah, the kid breaks his arm yeah. and then he throws hard. <laughs> Oh, did you ever see the the baseball movie with Joey Tribbiani and the chimpanzee? Yeah, um, the chimp playing pro baseball. Yeah, hey, what was that called? That's more believable than Airbud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Albert yeah. Hall is in Rookie of the Year, who's a mm. older black gentleman who looks fairly similar to Danny Glover. Damn, that was racist on me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Glover makes a spectacular performance in Angels on the Outfield, though. Ed. Yeah. Ed, yeah, I remember that. I, I had mean, that on VHS. I remember. Dude, I bet a chimp could fucking hit dingers. Uh, but, uh, I feel like it'd be a good pinch runner. No, chimps can't. Aren't Can that chimps fast. not run like that? But like no. that thing, a chimp could crank a home run. No way. It, think about it, how strong chimps are. They're strong, but they can't swing like that. I no. don't think. Yeah. I also feel like chimps versus gorillas. I feel like. Chimps wouldn't do as well as like a gorilla. I'm, I feel like gorillas. Like, do they have hand-eye coordination? I don't know, but I just bet if it connected on one, it could really send it. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, a gorilla would make an incredible offensive lineman. 
Uh, you, got, oh, yeah. you could train it. I actually don't think they say so. Say here, uh, ch chimpanzees can reach speeds of twenty-five miles per hour while running. Oh shit! That's what? Yeah. Put some respect. That's wait, wait, a oh, human can go like four miles per hour. No, like, like twelve. No, 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 oh, twenty. No, no. no, they can go like the top, top end speed, probably like twenty. I, know, I think no, he's faster than twenty-one. He was like twenty-six or something like that. Was you saying Paul twenty-six? Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah, not I four. I was I was running like nineteen twenty when I was in the league. Okay. You were. But um, but. A human can yeah, only run, like oh yeah, twenty <laughs> miles per hour for like a short period of time. Usain yeah, Bolt, short bursts. Usain Bolt, twenty-seven point three three miles per hour. Okay, but that's Usain so. Bolt. Yeah. So, so you think like, so like a... guy, fast guys, like fast, like so like dudes that be walking off on people in the league that they'll do like twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay. Hmm. But I feel yeah. like baseball people aren't that, or baseball players aren't as fast. Nah, like the chimp, chimp, he's stealing. He's he gonna get all these. Bases. Yeah. So pinch runner. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. you're so right. Yeah. I can't believe. I was thinking of the chimp running on two legs after hitting it with the. No. <laughs> They're running on all fours. Yeah. And, yeah. They'd be great at sliding. Maybe like an outfielder, like dive and catch. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, like a dog would be a good outfielder. Right. I've, I've, I've never mm -hmm. seen a chimp or an ape or a, or a gorilla like catch anything have you ever seen that True. yeah can chimps catch a dog, a dog can't catch nothing what in their mouth a dog can oh, catch no. in their mouth yeah they can catch oh, drop that shit every in time in actually, there actually there actually is a dog that's in the office today yeah, yeah. that, that shit catch. coming from that's home plate it's it knocking out his teeth he ain't catching shit and snapchat, Hell, see, no. snapchat sees dog can catch too chimps Still can cute. catch i mean have you ever Ooh. seen the videos of chimps hunting monkeys no yeah right here it says chimps use spears to hunt mammals yeah dude chimps are wild Mm -hmm. Oh, chimps go to war, bro. There's, there's been like a, there was like a 15 year war in the seventies between two chimp groups. Yeah. You, you were telling me about that. Yep. Yeah. It's like insane. <laughs> is that what that new Netflix thing is about? Uh, chimp empire or like ape empire? I think so. Um, there, there was just a newly recorded instance of chimps in the wild attacking a group of gorillas and killing their young, mm -hmm. which is insane. And you were the one who told me about the chimp dog war or the oh monkey in dog war going on uh, in India. Yeah. And it started when like a dog. K yeah. Killed a baby yeah, monkey. Killed a baby monkey. So the monkeys retaliated and killed like 50 baby dogs. Yeah. They just picked up all the puppies, ran up trees and dropped them. Yeah. Mo yeah. It was monkeys like are, you think 50 dogs in one day. Yeah. 50 puppies. And uh, yeah, the the dogs were not too happy about that. I think that war might still be raging. I think it hasn't stopped. Yeah, humans were like, we tried to break them up, but then the monkeys just attacked us. Yeah. So we're so we're like, all right, we're just gonna we're, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stay we're, out of remain this. neutral. Yeah, <laughs> the people are Switzerland in the yes. dog monkey war. <laughs> That's something you don't want to get wrapped do up we, in. Do we do we know what started it? Uh, it was the, the the monkeys. No, no, no. The the dogs killed a baby monkey, so they officially started it. But awesome. then, but then the monkeys took most, it to them. I mean, that's how most wars start. You kill one of ours, we gotta get one of yours. Right? Yeah. So, but damn. they was but the dogs got one of theirs, and then the monkeys retaliated by killing like fifty of of theirs. Levels. So, there's just, there's yeah. levels to this op shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I just found a, a video why chimps don't play baseball. Humans are much better than throwing at any other animals. Even our closing live is living relatives, chimpanzees can't match our pitching performs. Oh my god, I'm watching a chimp throw a baseball and it is hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> so me, they I can't do it. I need to send this to the macrodosing group. Yeah, they can't pitch and they're they can catch though. From what I'm watching. They don't have the biomechanics to throw a pitch, but they can catch. This is actually so interesting. Yeah, why chimps don't play baseball? There's just a, a YouTube video yeah, about right? it. There's, there's a random YouTube video. Yeah. Somebody has thought about and this in depth. The Christian Science Monitor wrote an entire article on why gorillas can't throw fastballs. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that science is like yeah. concentrating on these questions. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I want the answers. I feel like we could teach him though, because I'm looking at how they throw. He just like just he tosses it over his head like on some goofy shit. But if you, if you like, letting know somehow train him to. That's the one thing you know. Started to talk about golf again, really. But uh, <laughs> when you talking about when you talk about your golf swing, they always 
they always say like if you if you throw something you got to lead with your elbow so like even in these mechanics and you look in like what what we naturally do is we lead with our elbow and the chimp just kind of throws it over his head so you want to get that elbow like you're skipping a rock boom create more uh mm -hmm. leverage with the power she could be taught how throwing no, is human i don't think there's no there's no benefits for chimps to learn sports yeah there was back in like the 60s or something like that there was a woman who lived with a dolphin for like what? two years uh because she was trying to teach it english it was actually nasa funded research they were like we're just gonna like have this dolphin live with a human for years and like maybe it will just learn how to speak english but how'd it go yeah it it, it did not work i think they may have i think they ended up just having sex yeah <laughs> Dude, so I also just Googled how much a gorilla could bench. I think, if anything, we should train a gorilla for strongman. I think that would be the best use of, uh, like, training an animal to do something because apparently, like, a silverback gorilla can, like, maybe bench 4,000 pounds. But that's just, like, a, a by, an estimate on what they've been seen moving with a push. What the fuck? Yeah. So I think about, about That's like I'm, I'm sure That's like that one. Superman? Gorilla, that's like King Kong shit, bro. Four yeah. thousand pounds 4, with, pounds with so just like that's on tons. your back. I don't, yeah. I don't think so. Like a, a bench press. Well, I'm thinking if they can, I don't think they can do that. Bench press four thousand pounds. Think about how much they can Whoa. deadlift. But, but yeah. I don't think they. But where did you get this from? I would like to I, explore. Uh, WildGorillaSafaris.com. They may be yeah. biased. No, I mean. Yeah, it says they have the the one fully grown silverback gorilla is stronger than twenty adult humans. Yeah. Fucking hell. Like they they like rip. Can't we do some like gene splicing of Stalin. the gorilla genome and humans and just Stalin create a superhuman? Stalin had a whole like <laughs> yeah no Stalin during the Soviet Union tried to interbreed apes and humans. Literally like there's a woman who they try to use orangutan sperm to get pregnant. Like okay. literally look it up. I, I'll find yeah. the study Stalin's cause you want to create yeah. super did, soldiers. Did they use the Turkey baster method or did they probably, probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope. Yeah. Scientific ethics and Stalin's ape man, super warriors, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin wanted to rebuild the red army in the mid 1920s. Yeah. It's wild. Like the reason why, so like, all right, so I see, I see that this says four thousand pounds, but like when you get into the mechanics of it, like part of benching is learning how to like leverage your weight, right? Yeah. And gorillas have way longer arms than we do, so they would have to push that shit for a way longer amount of time than we would have to, and so four thousand pounds just seems like a stretch to me. There's no concrete evidence because we never put them on a bench. And plus, like when you're on your back like that, you're not able to use all of your strength, like all of their, you know, yeah. it would just be upper body. And so like, they're kind of just doing a rough guesstimation. And I, I don't think this is true. There's, I don't, I, I, I doubt this. Yeah. The long arm things we do underestimate. I mean, but how cool would it be if we trained it? Like, like half Thor, the, the big strongman, uh, the thing is all these bench records are all like, with all these straps and contraptions, like the compression See, sleeves and stuff. See, look, benchpress.net says that uh, they they arrive at around 1,800 pounds. Uh, they said, how do we arrive there? They said, the main reason is that there are recorded experiments which compare the strength of gorillas to that of an average human. In most data, gorillas are typically four to 10 times stronger than humans. When looking at upper body strength, gorillas are typically six times stronger than humans. Going back to our previous point to intro, if a human can bench press their own body weight, a gorilla would be able to theoretically bench press six times their own body weight. If a gorilla weighs 300 pounds, that takes the number up to 1,800. And gorillas can, like, I think like the massive gorillas like, are around five to 600 pounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. That the, makes that makes more sense. Like, I don't know, but that makes more sense. 4,000. That's a lot of fucking weight, yeah. though. But that's if you get them on a strength program. You know what I'm saying? Like we've seen the only. But they're like, animals. No, but this is. I don't think that's the. I don't think that would correlate the same though. Like gorillas. Like, 
we have to de like we we have to we have to relearn our anatomy, which is natural to us. They're just like that. They 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 woke up like that, and so like I think it, maybe you can increase it to a certain amount of percentage, but like for the most part, they just like that. Like babies come out walking and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're just like baby deers. Maybe yeah, yeah, baby deers come out walking, fam. Like if our babies just came out walking, it would save us a lot of time and stress. Mm -hmm. But they don't. We gotta we gotta raise these motherfuckers from the seed up do you actually think though like if a baby if a baby human came out walking that that would be less stressful i feel like that'd be more stressful because then they have the ability to go wherever they want i feel like again babies aren't really my thing but i feel like part of the thing about babies is that you can kind of put them down and, <laughs> and they're just gonna stay there for a little bit like mm -hmm. until you move them physically well that's why yeah. that's why you know? humans like one of the biggest difference between humans and monkeys is we have such wider hips to like carry babies on their hip. Like women do? Yeah. Well, women also have wider hips to like have the baby. Right. Well, but that was also a thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think monkey babies just cling on. Like with their little arms. Yeah. Right. But like if, if you have like a three week old baby or something, it's not going to go anywhere. We're like, also better able to protect the helpless baby human yeah what do you mean why because we had like tools and oh, fire. oh oh oh! i thought you meant like physically with our bodies yeah apparently when humans evolved to walk upright like that's what caused all the complications with childbirth like back in the day didn't like like one in ten women die from giving birth yeah or even oh, like yeah. higher and it's just because like naturally it's a lot easier to have a kid when you're like walking on all all fours somehow but when mm -hmm. we when we started to walk upright like maybe the vagina opening got smaller well, i don't know i don't know the science behind it but i do know that it became <laughs> a lot harder to have kids once humans start walking upright i always think about that too why are women having babies laying down why am why aren't they not like standing up and gravity helps i actually Ooh. read i saw a crazy viral video Y'all are getting soft, that's why. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> no, like apparently it's like the totally wrong way to have a child. Yeah. Well, some people have their child Wouldn't it just slip out? have their child underwater. Yeah. yeah. And the baby is born naturally knowing how to swim to the surface. Yeah. It kind of just floats. There's a bunch of videos. Yeah, there's a, I've seen a bunch of videos. Have you there. seen the videos of them, like people just dropping their child in the water and then they like clap at them to come back up? Yeah. And yeah. the baby just like floats yeah. back up. That's why I don't like, that's understand when, when people don't know how to swim. Like if you just trust your instincts right. well, you know, and breathe, you'll, you'll be able to swim. <laughs> no, because babies' heads are so big that they float. So okay. it's easy for them to just float like that. That because their whole body composition is different. Mm. That's why uh, I did. I say this on this podcast. This podcast that babies automatically know how to swim. I think I did, and everyone's like, "No," but like it's because no, their no, heads nobody float. Said, nobody said no, bro. We, that is a very well known fact. I, I think that I said that at like a a, a different gathering of the minds. <laughs> they, they don't know what the fucks go. What the fuck's wrong with they you? They don't know how to swim. They know to hold their breath and float a certain way they, to yeah. keep their face. They go up. to they, the surface and they then like they the they know how to. They know how to put yeah. they body they, they body on their back to where they float and they mm -hmm. they can they can breathe. They're just like buoys. <laughs> they kind of are born like with like a like a life ring around their necks a little bit. Hmm. They'll just kind of float. Yeah. A floaty. Yeah. I saw this TikTok of this couple that had a pull-up bar and they would just make their baby hang on it <laughs> while it was growing, and then it, it was like the baby was like twelve a year old finally, and it just could hang. <laughs> It was the craziest what? thing ever. That's gonna be your. Well, I was gonna say, why do I know you're gonna do that? With yeah, your I was like, this child. is a great experiment. I'm gonna follow up on this. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you want to have kids, Billy? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. One day. No wrong answer, man. I'm just, just curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. You're a breeder. <laughs> you know you Shave. You're killing the environment. I feel like Billy wants like a small army. Maybe. Uh, I feel like in this day and age, it's too tough to have a lot of kids. Like, I don't know. Unless you just, live like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like, or you're very rich. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Yeah, um, kids are gross. 
Yeah, like I, I just anti kids. I always yeah, felt I like bad for oh. kids for kids growing up who had like five brothers and none of them like had enough clothes and things like that. Where it's like if you guys just had two kids, <laughs> you would all have plenty of clothes. And like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and, but that and plenty that of might, money. Stop fucking. That might, but like those kids might be better off by those experiences right. to become successful later in life. Yeah, maybe. If they like, yeah, if they learn to outcompete the rest yeah. of their siblings, yeah, <laughs> for resources, <laughs> yeah, they have that grind set. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and they just—I mean, if you grow up with five brothers, you're beating the hell out of each other every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think, yeah, if you grow up with five brothers, one or two of those brothers are going to come out really well, and the rest, <laughs> not so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the mid brothers still doing okay. Let's hope. There's going to be one. Who are you referring to? Yeah. <laughs> I have a group of, of brothers of five that I'm uh, thinking of. Right? I have okay. a group that I'm thinking of. <laughs> you know, like, the, like the mid brothers are going to be okay. Like they're not, you know, doing crazy well, but they're still providing a living for themselves. Then there's the one brother who's going to have to go through some demons. And he, <laughs> he'll, he's going to have to go to rehab. Yeah. He, he'll end up good on the other end. Okay. But it's just a, he has a couple more steps of growth. Mm-hmm. He was the neglected one, or the yeah, or the the one that never had any responsibility. The baby, true. Mm -hmm. I would hate to have no siblings, though. Are, yeah, is anyone an only child? Mm -mm. Is anyone here an only child? No, no. no. I think they're some of the most. Uh, I'm not gonna say it. No, but I'd be down with it. Really, Big yeah. Two? It's yeah, I can see yeah. you being down with it. I don't. I don't really care one way or the other. Like my sister's great. But... Yeah, but you could do without her. <laughs> no like if she like, didn't uh, exist i am i am more happy that she does exist but <laughs> if if she didn't i would be just fine yeah okay i feel like Fair. you like as a child could entertain yourself a lot yeah yeah like I an swear. only child does <laughs> yeah i still entertain myself all day i could i could go days without talking to anybody <laughs> yeah that's nuts days of playing only with yourself <laughs> Oh, yeah. I could uh, just play video games, watch. Uh, I see what you were going for. Yeah, else. yeah. But... Um, I could go, yeah, days, weeks without talking to anybody. That's that's crazy. That's nice. I'd go nuts. You yeah. should do one of those uh, silent that's retreats. I should like that. Yeah, I, I, I do have a friend who signed up for like a 10-day silent retreat with uh, with – 10 other people it was some sort of spiritual thing where you just you go and you can't talk for 10 days but you still like eat as a group and meditate as a group that's weird i would just rather <laughs> i people want to be by myself yeah I yeah i don't that. you, That'd be you so would not awkward. thrive in that environment yeah that's yeah, weird i would not like that the dinner, the dinner you're just sitting there eating and everybody's kind of looking at each other like, <laughs> yeah yeah, that, I can, there's got to be there's got to be laughing and shit. It has to be like um, nobody's that mature. I, is there anyone who like actually like is fine with lack of stimulation? Like, I've never met. Maybe we're in the wrong work environment because everyone we work with. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Lack of what, what kind of stimulation? stimulation? Like, I always feel like I have to be doing something stimulating. Like, even though Big T's like, I like being alone. He's definitely, you know, on his computer, on his phone, reading sports scores, talking about sports, like doing his interests. Mm -hmm. Right. Am I, am I wrong, Big T? Yeah. Like I said, entertain myself. Like I'm doing something. Yeah. I'm not just sitting somewhere. Yeah. Is there Meditating. anyone who's like, you know, who like they can just stare straight ahead? Like I, I need constant stimulation. No. Yeah. No, I can't be yeah. alone with my thoughts. Like I need to be like doing something. Yeah. I'm the same way, but I would like to learn how to meditate. Like even if it was just for twenty minutes a day. Yeah, that's really hard. Cause I I do know people. They're like, yeah, I always meditate for like ten to thirty minutes a day. I would like to at least try doing that, but no, the, as of now, the closest I've, I've gotten, read like a, a lot of like studies on that shit, and apparently it does. There's like real literature on the it could it could lower anxiety, depression levels, mm -hmm. like all kind of stuff mentally. People have even meditated themselves into like hallucinate. Uh, like a, a form of hallucination to like, yeah. like same, same kind of trip as like, um, psychoactive drugs, mm -hmm. but that shit boring, bro. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. Like, I've, I've tried that shit is just fucking boring. I'm just sitting there and then it's like, am I doing it right? Yeah. You know, like, am I, am I doing, am I doing this right? Do I, do I just sit here and just think, and then well, I can't just stop thinking. Breathing. Like, that shit goes. 
Yeah, because like when you meditate, you're supposed to not be thinking of anything. So it's like that's not, and see, that's, when an idea that's comes in your head, you're just like supposed it. to let it go. Like passing cars. Like, she's like you're watching traffic. Every thought's a car. Let it pass through. You're yes. just like, what the fuck? I want to think about that. Yeah. Like, that was a cool you know, thought. You know what fucks me up about the breathing? And see, it just happened. God damn it. When I think, it's going to fuck everybody up that's listening to this now, too. When I'm worried about breathing with, uh, like, meditation, like, you have to think about breathing, right? You have to slow it down. But when I think about breathing, it's no longer automatic. And so then it's like, oh, shit, I got to, I got to breathe. Like, I have to. Cause if I don't breathe, I just stop breathing. So like now I'm thinking right now I'm thinking about breathing. So I'm breathing. It's not, it's, it's, it's I put it on manual. It's man. I'm manually breathing right now, which is frustrating as fuck. Every now and then that, that thought enters my mind. I gotta, I gotta make myself breathe. Are you, are you making yourself breathe? Now? I forgot. Yeah. For, when you said I do exactly what you're saying, I was like in through the nose, out through the mouth. The thing you know like I'm that saying? that happens to me is, and now it's happening right now is seeing my nose. <laughs> Like oh, when I, I out that. of the corner of my eye, I see my nose and then I can't unsee it for hours. I hate that. I also can't breathe through my nose that well. So, yeah. One time I broke my nose and then you could see it really well because it was like pointed to the side. So yeah, I could you just, have, I could tell had, it was broken because I was like. <laughs> you had both of those things. You had to, you had to see your nose and think about breathing. That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> That's too bad, man. Anybody have any quirks like that? Like when, like when you look in the sky and you see those squiggly lines, that kind of just like move. And if you look at them, they move away. Yes. I hate that shit. Oh, yeah. I cannot stand that shit. I think those are white blood cells. Them. I, I don't know. What? I think I think those are the floaters are. Wait, wait. Let me just. Okay. Floaters. In eye. Or it's when you look at the blue sky. You know how when you look at the blue sky, kind of like looks a little weird mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like it, it looks like uh uh almost fuzzy in a way mm -hmm. wait uh, floaters and i what are they something wait, when you look at the blue sky it's fuzzy um like when you look at the pure blue sky it makes you like can see your white blood cells or something it's something like that bits of cell debris that drift around in the fluid fills the back of your eye so that's what eye floaters are clumps of clear jelly-like substance Inside. So those are dead cells, but they can get rid of that shit. Yeah, I mean, when you have like too, way too many, um, staring at sky, fuzzy. What is that? I I uh, saw a fact. I need to figure out what are the moving dots I see when I look at a clear blue sky. Okay, yeah. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, the moving dots you see when staring at the sky are created by your own white blood cells flowing through your eyes. Blood flows to your eyes through blood vessels that pass over the retina, the part of your eye that acts as a receptor for all light red blood cells, which make up more than 90% of your blood absorb blue light. White blood cells let blue light through to your retina, which sends a signal of increased brightness to the brain. So those moving dots you see when you look at the blue sky are your white blood cells. The floaters are dead cells. I did not know that. It's that's like one of those crazy facts that just like makes me stare at the blue sky, be like, "Oh shit, look at all those white blood cells." So the squig squiggly lines are dead cells. Yeah. Okay. Well, the more you know. That, that's like one of those awesome facts. Speaking of weird breathing, um, when I was in Nepal and we got up to an altitude of like fifteen thousand feet, I would be breathing normally but there's not a lot of oxygen in the air. So when, so when I was trying to go to bed, you'd just be like mm -hmm. breathing. And then all of a sudden you would have to catch your breath. Cause Whoa. You, you'd be like, oh. like, like as I was falling asleep, I would wake myself up just gasping for air because like, like in a normal breath, you weren't getting the same amount of oxygen. So it, it's kind of like scared. sleep apnea Whoa. almost. D uh, do you and think? Yes, I, I was gonna say I wanted to get it so because you um you you recently visited Nepal and you wanted to kind of like talk about your your extravaganza over there, man. Uh, go to Beans. What? How was it? It was incredible. We got um ten videos coming out about my adventures there. Um, but yeah, we hiked all the way up to Everest Base Camp, which is seventeen thousand five hundred feet. Um, and yeah, the first few days on that hike, you're like 
struggling to breathe, but then your body slowly adapts and um, generates more red blood cells. Whoa. So like as time went on, it got easier and easier. But um, you also like, you don't just hike directly up there because then your body couldn't adapt in time. So some days we would hike somewhere and then like hike up a thousand feet and hike back down because that would help your body adapt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually what you have to do if, when you're climbing Mount Everest too. You don't just climb the mountain. You first, you climb like a quarter of the way up and then you climb back down and then you climb halfway up and then you climb back down. And then like you'll climb three, three quarters of the way up and climb back down. So even after you reach the base camp, it can take people like 40 days to reach the summit because you're just, you're constantly going up and down to get used to the altitude. That's one of the most interesting things that I did not know about going up to Everest is that it's not just one straight march up. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. Which is wild. Uh, what would happen if you just went straight up? You pass out? Uh, yeah, most people would, but I'm sure there are people who have done it. I mean, it's crazy. There are people who've climbed Mount Everest without using any oxygen. And after 8,000 meters, you're technically in the death zone where like humans shouldn't be able to survive, but like some people can just push through it. I don't know. And just survive on like little to no oxygen. It's wild. Like I met this Taiwanese girl. She was like a she was like a tiny girl and she had already climbed K2 without using any oxygen. And now she was trying to climb Mount Everest without using oxygen. Well, isn't that uh, part of it is that she needs less oxygen. Isn't it harder for bigger people at higher altitudes? Yeah. Come to think of it, the, the two people I met on the trip who had climbed tall mountains without using any supplemental oxygen were both smaller girls. Yeah. Um, before we get into that, I just want to talk oh, to you, shaman. one of my favorite sponsors, Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. When you're looking for great places to go that uh, don't necessarily have to be Mount Everest, you got to go to Game Time. Uh, I actually used Game Time over the weekend to uh, get my father some Knicks tickets. He wanted to go see the Knicks. And it's so easy, uh, so affordable. It's one of the greatest uh advertisers at barstool it's created by fans for fans game time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows and they guarantee the lowest price so i'm using uh game time to go to the yankees game maybe this weekend i like to go up to the bars uh up there in the bronx and sit and then check game time once the game starts because they still have deals and they have the most amazing deals after the first pitch that strategy uh, it's a little ruined by the pitch clock, but still plays. Uh, Big T, are you going to see any games recently using game time? Uh, yeah, I went to a Braves game Monday. Hell yeah. Not only can you go to sports games, you can go to concerts. Uh, it is an amazing app. It's possible with the game time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. The purchase process takes just two taps in 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, it's delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code MACRO. That's M A C R O for $20 off your first purchase. That's $20 off your first purchase. That might even be a free ticket some places. Nice. So check it out. Yeah. Maybe I'll try to get to a Celtics playoff game. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Let's look up uh, that stat about bigger bodies and altitude. Yes. Yeah, because y'all saying fat people can't climb mountains. I, I don't think it's necessarily oh. fat people. I think it's like tall people too. Body composition. Fat, fat and tall people. Yeah. Arian could climb a mountain for sure. Would you ever want to? Uh, I would not want to. I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. It seems not yes. as tough because like climbing Mount Everest can take like two months. Mount Kilimanjaro, it only takes a week. Chris Long you know what it has is, done bro? that. Yeah. I respect nature so much. I don't fuck with it. You know I, mean? I respect <laughs> nature too much, man. Have Have you ever gone on a hike? Uh, my ex girl. She took me to this hike. It was actually beautiful. Actually, 
but mm. it's like it's like it's very you know modern it wasn't like i didn't we didn't go off the trail i was like listen bro do not take me off the trail <laughs> i'm not i'm not adventurous and so we just went down this little pathway boom there's a little waterfall we sat there and then we had a couple bottles of wine it was nice it was really beautiful man. Uh -huh. but other than that now nah, i, I kind of try to stay out of nature man i respect it too much i love hiking so much yeah i like i would have thought growing up in new mexico like you were exposed to a lot of nature uh nah i'm from the inner city man we i kind of just i mean albuquerque oh is, yeah I mean, okay there, there are some like desert stuff but like i, I was never into it like yeah yeah like, yeah there's a lot of like snakes and shit like that and that's why i do not fuck with snakes dog like no yeah, like you okay. have it's one of them things it's like it's like a phobia where it's like i just get shivers thinking about the shit like i saw a snake at my golf course the other day and I was just driving and I saw like a little wiggly thing in the middle of the thing. And I, I, I stopped me in my tracks. I froze, dog. What's and that? I just, I don't fucking like care. Like a diamond I, I did. I don't know, bro. It was, I, I, was, I made the biggest circle around that motherfucker. And I'm like, why are you talking to it? And she's like, bro, what are you doing here, bro? Like, get your ass Dude. out of here. I hate, I cannot do snakes, dog. Oh my God. I, I lo used to love catching snakes. Uh. And one time I ran to a diamondback rattler in a wood pile in Maine, in Maine, North Maine. And I was like, like my whole life, I was like, like the, all the animals are boring in the Northeast. There's no like venomous snakes. There's like, you know, yeah. there's salamanders, like there's enough, but like, you know, down South has all the wide variety of snakes, lizards. And I found a diamond rack rattler in a wood pile. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so cool. But I was at my, uh, my older cousin's house who's like my mom's cousin who's like kind of like a, a grandma and uh she always you know i, I went and told her it's like there's a diamond back in the wood pile and she's like no way there can't be and it was the coolest find ever found because it was like no one would ever expect a diamond back to be that far north yeah and i, I was like think... seven and thank god i was obsessed with snakes so i knew it was venomous and didn't try to catch it that yeah, the, the only snakes I saw growing up were garter. Yeah, yeah, garter snakes, which you can play with. They're not gonna, yeah, they're not they gonna can bite, bite you. you. Well, they oh, bite. they can, but they just have zero matter. venom. It's like oh, it's fucking around with a little yeah. garter snake. And but you know, <laughs> hell no. Just I mean, what do you hate more, snakes or spiders? Snakes. I don't, okay. Spiders don't bother me. Like I, I don't like them, but it's just like when I see one, I'm not like ah, spider. I, I'm a it's big just, fan. I, of spiders. I avoid them. I don't really fuck with yeah. them. But I, snakes, yeah. dog? You want to the most useless fucking thing on the earth? No, I mean... Besides cockroaches. Snakes... I don't care. I don't care what they do. I don't care how good they are for the ecosystem. Not me. No, they're, you know how they benefit you? Spiders and snakes? Spiders they're, kill they're, mosquitoes and bugs in your house, which I'm all for. Just hang out, kill mosquitoes for me. You totally well, can. They ain't, That's how you pay they your ain't rent. On my job at my, they ain't on my job at my house. And there's a whole bunch of fucking bugs. Yeah, going around, especially in the summertime. They and need to hurry up with the shit. Snakes kill rodents, so I mean, that's a win-win. Yeah. Ah uh, man, snakes are the reason we ain't walking around naked right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know the Northeast has black widow spiders, which are pretty damn poisonous. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Um, when I was in, when I was in, uh. Botswana, Africa, my friend walked over a black mamba. Oh shit. And then like some people who were who were at the campsite we were at like jumped out of the woodwork and just beat the thing to death. Yeah. But those are one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. Oh, I mean, where were you? You probably I think after you get hit, bit by a black mamba, you have like 15 minutes. To yeah, get... he was very close to death. He was just walking out of the bathroom and like walked right over one. No, sir. Black I used to watch. Um, oh, it's seven to fifteen hours. Okay, so you'd be good. Cause collapse in forty-five minutes. I know uh, Mike Posner. Do you guys know him? Yeah, he got bit by a rattler. Yeah, when he was trying to walk across the United States. Yeah, and then he ended up like he went to the hospital for maybe a week and then completed the walk. I think he was a little fucked up by it after. I think he was in a remote area. Yeah, he was. I think just on a highway in Colorado. Yeah, just it was just on the side of the highway and Did bit he, him. Was he doing it barefoot? Do I remember that correctly? I don't know. I mean, he's been doing a lot of crazy stuff. He also climbed Mount Everest. Yeah, 
He took that pill in Ibiza and just yeah, went that, to living life. Yep. Um, but seriously, uh, Mike Posner, barefoot? Was he barefoot? Why do I think he was barefoot? Nah, bro. Because how did he get bit through boots? I mean, their fangs are pretty long. Yeah. They don't really be, from my understanding about snakes, they don't really be active like that. Like, don't be hunting. They just, like, feel attacked and then they spring. If you step on one, is the big one. The, the, like, if you back one to the corner, that's when the rattle comes out. Um, and they won't strike unless you're, like, trying to eat it or you step on one. Or near it. Yeah, they're they're not like they're not actively trying to go out and attack humans. No, I mean hiking. I just love hiking. From the, the type of work we do, if I'm on the weekends, just like in the woods, away from my phone, like on trail maps with my dog, like like doing like a four mile hike, and then there's hopefully like a, a body of water involved that you can jump in, mm -hmm. like a like a mountain stream. Oh yeah, or like a a nice waterfall. That's just a one. Mm -hmm. That's a great day. I swam in a waterfall hey. in Nepal. It was fucking sick. Oh, dude, that must yeah, you're saying, sick. You, you, I was gonna say you was uh you was in the middle of telling us about the rest of your Nepal trip. Oh yeah, um, well, seeing I'm on macro dosing, I think it's only right to talk about my experience with Mad Honey. Have you get Have you guys ever heard of it? Just from you. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Yeah. Joe Rogan's talked about it a few times. One of his guests actually brought it on his show and they tried it. And now he just has a jar of it in his podcast studio. So he'll like randomly hand it out to people who are on the pod. Um, yeah, I had a chance to try that in Nepal. So it's a type of honey that's harvested from hives that are like 4,000 meters up. And like up there, there's a type of rhododendron flower that has some sort of psychoactive nectar that the bees then bring into the hive and make honey out of. Um, it's called like garana toxin or whatever. So I had heard it called hallucinogenic honey. I heard it called psychedelic honey. And I was like, this shit sounds awesome. I got to try it. Um, so I found a dude in Kathmandu who had it. Uh, this was like my first day in the country. And I tried some. Now... He said to do just one teaspoon. And uh, mom, I apologize if you're listening to this. I wasn't feeling anything off the one teaspoon. So I took a couple more. And uh, yeah, that shit hit me hard. Jeez. It, I was, um, I think um, this is all going to be documented in a video I dropped next week. But at first it felt like I was just being like bathed in icy hot. Like you have this kind of like cold, hot sensation just rushing through your body. And like this really tingly sensation, like when your legs go to sleep. Uh, and at first I was like, oh, this feels cool. Like this is pretty sweet. But then I started to violently puke for like Jeez. three hours. Um, wow. And uh, you do not hallucinate at all. Like it was, I was like, this is going to be like shrooms or whatever. It was not like shrooms. Um, I don't know what I would compare it to. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, is there any comparable? It sounds like poison. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. But I guess like most drugs are like a form of a yeah. form of poison. Do you, do you have any on you? Uh, What's it called again? It's called Nepalese Mad Honey. Mad Honey. And like they do it there. Some people say it's an aphrodisiac. Some people say it's kind of like weed. Um, like you can take it for aches and pains. I, I did bring some back to the U.S. and... I checked it is legal to transport back here. So uh, Vibs might do an episode of lowering the bar of it if if you guys want to try it. But definitely only do one teaspoon. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I kind of want to try it right now. <laughs> because the thing is- Do you want me to grab it? Fuck. You have some? Yes. Yeah, let's have Billy on Mad Honey this episode. That'd be <laughs> yeah, fun. yeah. I think as long as you just do one teaspoon, I'm gonna do you'll be fine. I'm going to do a little less. I'm going to do half a teaspoon. Maybe okay. even- Maybe even a, a quarter of a teaspoon. Just do you want me to grab it? Ah, no, you know what? Yeah, I think half I a would, teaspoon. I would one. It's not like fatal or anything, right? It'd be great. I don't know. No, I mean half a teaspoon would be fine. It doesn't make you see shit. No. 
Like, do you think it's bad for gains? No, it's just boy, you ain't oh trying to a teaspoon nothing. of honey. You ain't trying to gain. I'm, I've been, dog. I've been on my. I'm going hard. Twenty eight for Memorial Day. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll just be like a, a little would, bit of sugar. honey. Yeah, just honey, just some sugar. Sh- should I just put it in some tea? Yeah, you put it in tea. Yeah, if you Why want, only put it in some tea. Okay, all right. Just do, take that shit to the head, dog. Do we have a teaspoon? I can go, we'll guess I can go get one. Guess. Okay. No, I'm, I'm down for this. All right, small, small okay. break. When okay. we come back, small break. Billy would be on Mad Honey. Let's do some Mad Honey. Okay. I didn't see. like really f- feel the effects for like an hour, an hour and a half. Is so this legal? You'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because like just for YouTube purposes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> when we come back. Billy will be on crack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. All right. We're back. We are back and we got the, the goodies. We got the goodies. Right. Donnie, you got the shit? All right, so this is Mad Honey and Billy about to take a whole teaspoon. No, I'm going to take a, a little bit. You're going to nibble it, bro. Uh, you don't made a stop the pile. You're going to gas the whole shit up. No, take the whole I'm, shit. Billy I, said he's he's trying to play basketball afterwards. Yeah, I have a basketball game. <laughs> How long take... does it last? Um, I mean... For me, it lasted a while, but um, I I took like three heaping teaspoons. You're taking like a half, yeah, okay. a, a teaspoon. So does it? T- you'll be fine. Does it taste like honey? Yeah, except it like makes you cough kind of. Oh, it's got oh. it's got like a, got a little spice bite to, to it. it. Yes, you'll just have some like weird tingling sensations. What does it taste like? Spicy honey. I don't know. The cool thing is if you watch the videos of, really like of, of how of how they harvest this, like it's people climbing up these gigantic cliffs tied to a rope. Cause you can only harvest this from the hives that are like way up on the top of cliffs. I think this was like in the Jungle Book movie, wasn't it? Oh there? yeah. When because the bear wanted to get high, so he was like, "Mowgli, I need your help going up to get the, to get the mad stuff." Huh. Okay. Well, we're just gonna forget it happened and try not to panic if anything happens. Yeah, there was one person who took. Don't tell me this now. Well, no, no. He took. He took a ton. <laughs> Don't tell me it's fucking. No, now. no, no. There was <laughs> one person sent me a DM and he was like, when we were in Nepal, my friend had like a bunch of that stuff and. He couldn't like walk for five days. What the fuck? No, but he took like Dude, he, already took, he it. took like a ton. Oh shit! No, he killed Billy. Oh fuck! You took a. You gonna be you, fine, man. Yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. Also, probably. The, like the the. He took like a ton. You you took a very modest amount. And you, I think, yeah, well, you don't I need don't both know. hands. You know what I'm saying? Kill. Something crazy. Have you? Don't, yeah. You don't need oh, both hands. Off. You just need no, one, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine, but um. <laughs> Look up the photos of people harvesting it. It's wild. Yeah. It's like they risk their lives to do that shit, huh? Yeah. Is it and, like similar to taking shrooms? No, I, that's what I was, I was kind of pissed because everyone's like hallucinogenic honey. I thought it was going to be like shrooms. It's, it was not like shrooms at all. Oh, uh, shit. Why do I already feel something? You don't feel anything. That's called just... placebo, my brother. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. That's called you me right. tweaking out. You'll be good. You'll be yes, good. Placebo. Let's see. How long does Mad Honey? If For me, I didn't really start feeling it until after an hour and a half or something. And then it, it, it came on strong. But for you, it's, it's not going to come on strong. I was with one other person who took two, and he was fine. He was feeling it, so but it he said was it, fine. It said it could, it could kick in from anywhere to a half an hour to four hours. <laughs> so <laughs> so I forget you did this shit, though. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to feel weird later. <laughs> you're going to start tripping, You're going to be going up for a layup in the basketball game, and then your hand's just going to go limp. And you just, Is that and what you happens? just never come down. No. Yes, but you, only, you, only, but you, you only need one hand, though. It's, Okay, let's not fuck with me while I took the Himalayan honey. Oh, 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 oh you will be fucked with. <laughs> oh, you will be Say. fucked with. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm the wrong person to do drugs around. I'd be making. Griano toxin is what it's called. 
What if I just start puking? You won't. You took a very small amount. Okay. You're on Big Cat's chair, so you make everybody happy. Yeah, no, that would get me fucking. Yeah. Sick. One of the side <laughs> effects is t- temporary paralysis. No, dude. What? The <laughs> fuck? <laughs> no, dude. I'm. I'm. I promise you. You took a very small amount. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'm if Donnie wasn't was paralyzed, hey, you won't be. He probably took like half a teaspoon or something like that. He'll be good. Ooh, I just don't know why they call it hallucinogenic because it's it's not hallucinogenic. <sighs> they say you have to take a lot. Billy's mom, yeah. if you're watching this, he took a very safe amount. A very safe it's amount. Not a, let's let's get drugs, let's though. talk about let's talk. Did you see the Yeti up there? Um, no, I didn't. But I, I was walking by this one place that said they had a Yeti skull. Yeah, preserved. Now, do you know what one theory about the Yeti is? Is what? that when you're at really high altitudes you can start to hallucinate yeah like you can just start to see shit While you're taking the honey you, you too. don't really know what is going on no not when you're taking the honey just from like being so high up so they think the myth of the yeti came from just like sherpas up there dealing with the altitude who are like lost in the snow aren't getting enough oxygen and then just like think they're seeing some giant abominable snowman yeah that's huh. kind of lit I mean, Big T's looking pretty. Yeah, like if I saw our Big T at a very high altitude and I wasn't breathing well, I might, you know, I could. I would maybe assume you were some sort of Yeti. If you just I don't appreciate that. If you just took <laughs> Mad Honey and you like look to your left and be like, "Oh shit, is that a Yeti?" Yeah, that that might work. Big Yet T. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's crazy though how like you've got the Yeti myth in Nepal, you've got the Bigfoot myth, yeah, like all over. You've got Sasquatch, you've got like all different. The I think Yowie like, in yeah. Australia. Uh, then there's one in Siberia too. Yeah, almost all cultures have some myth of it. Um, which you think maybe that comes from like you know, 10,000 years ago when there were still remnants of the other species of humans too. Yeah. 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 Gigantopithecus was uh, like uh, basically the Yeti that lived in China and in the Himalayan regions. And that's what they think the Yeti myth is based off of. Yeah. And it's just been passed down through generations and generations. Um, yeah. So that, what other kind of things did you get into while you, while you was over there, man? Because I know, like, what kind of what kind of food was it? That's always interesting to see the different kind of cuisines in different places, aside from the mad honey. Yeah. So the mo- the most popular thing I ate out there were momos, um, which are just Nepalese dumplings, and they're very good. Uh, I, That's exactly when you said momos, I was thinking like a small ball like thing. It's exact. It's a, it's a small ball. Boom! It sounds like it. It sounds like a Momo. I don't even, I've never heard of that, but it sounds like I want. I want a Momo, dude. They're so Maybe good. Um, a lot of the times they're fried and then tossed in this chili sauce. Um, I I might like them more than Johnny's dumplings. Um, yeah. We also ate some yak. There's a lot of yaks up there. Yaks are chill, um, and they use they use yaks, humans, and donkeys to like transport all the stuff up the mountains and it is insane like you'll see people carrying maybe like 22 by fours stacked and then like wrapped in this uh bandage that they like tie to the sticks and then they tie around their head and they and they'll just walk it up a hill for six hours like the sherpas there are some of the most athletic people i've seen in my life um like we all had these huge bags and then we had a day bag and the Sherpas would carry everyone's huge bag to where you needed to go. They would just put these three gigantic duffel bags on their back, attach those to a rope on their head and walk up a steep mountain. I would like to, I'm looking at pictures of them right now. I would yeah. like to see like the, cause they got, mad luggage on a back yo like i would like to see the long effects of carrying that much shit on your back up a hill i know it's i i almost feel like they've just evolved to be able to handle it or maybe if they start doing it at such a young age they can they like can handle it. but like if 
if any of us tried doing that, we would be fucked. Like our backs yeah. would be broken yeah. after a few hours. I mean, the yaks up there, they can handle the high altitude. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would assume so. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I totally tapped out. I've been googling mad honey side effects. <laughs> all right, no, I, <laughs> you go psych yourself. I don't. I don't want this yeah. to ruin the, the whole podcast. It's not. It's not. You took a super small amount. I like no, no. When I walked, being a tweak, I'm being a tweak. When I walked into the place, he like before I even bought the honey, he was like, "Hey, do you want a sample of it?" And he like handed me some like the, uh, uh, an even larger amount than you just took, and I was fine. I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Dbap. I didn't even what's that, what's that thing where um what's that thing where that like I forget what it's called there's a name for it but it's where women uh they think that they're pregnant and they start to think they start to feel like they're pregnant oh. and their oh. body actually starts showing signs of phantom them pregnancy being pregnant. yeah yeah but what is it called I saw that on Glee uh, yeah phantom pregnancy <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest most of my early pregnancy education came from the show Glee. <laughs> That's concerning. Oh, Are you a Gleek? Pseudo- yeah, I was a Gleek. It's called a. Uh, it's called pseudosiasis. Uh, pseudosiasis is it's a false pregnancy when a person believes they're pregnant but they're not. And yeah, it's also called phantom pregnancy. So, but it, you start to like your body starts showing like symptoms, like your breasts start growing, you you miss your period, shit like that. That's fucking bananas. So you might have some honey siasis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that seems it seems about right okay. um yeah so along the hike we uh walked by the highest irish pub in the world that looks sick had to go in no you went in yes of course i i had to go in but when i was walking in there was like 30 donkeys out front and like each of the donkeys had two kegs strapped to their backs so that's like how the pub gets all its beer just by donkeys carrying up supplies Running hooch, because <laughs> they have they have no roads throughout this whole trek. So like all the supplies, everything you see up at the base camp, where they just have these huge tents and coffee machines. Um, like base camp felt like you're in a small town of sorts, but you're just like in the middle of the mountains. All the supplies for that are all carried up by either yaks, donkeys, or humans. It's wild. How was the trek? What was the topography like? I mean, the mountains are so beautiful. Um, the trek itself wasn't that hard. You are walking for maybe six hours a day, mm-hmm. but it's not like a lot of the train isn't directly up or anything. There's a lot of flat stuff too. It's just uh, dealing with the altitude. So it's important to take it slow and not just rush up to camp. Because we did have a few people in our group that um, had to be had to be like, medevaced back to Kathmandu. Whoa. You do, uh, you're looking amazing. You dropped a lot of weight. Thank you. Yeah. You're looking in shape. Um, yeah, we have it pretty well. I, I wanted to keep on going up the mountain, if not climb Mount Everest. I didn't have like another month to spare, but Mm -hmm. some people were climbing up, uh, uh, Mount Lobuche, which is Mm -hmm. 16,200 feet. And I wanted to do that, but it would have cost like another 6,000 per person. Well, mountaineering is not cheap. And, um, I had already used up my entire budget, so I couldn't swing it, but I was very tempted to, to, to try. I, we like used up our budget. So once we got to base camp, we were there for four nights, five days. We were like, shit right now to get back to Kathmandu, I guess we would have to hike five, six days to the airport and then fly or Stella blue could pay for a helicopter straight from base camp all the way back to Kathmandu. So I called up big cat and I pitched him on the idea saying, I'll like, like I'm going to film a Stella blue music video, take all these promo shots for you. And all I need from you is two helicopter tickets back to Kathmandu. What the hit for? Yeah, what's what's what? that price tag? They were nine fifty each. That's that's worth it to get you nine hundred dollars. What? Oh, I, th- I thought nine hundred dollars. Yeah, nine oh, nine fifty. I thought, I thought it would be way more than that, bro. I was like, shit. Same here. I guess we found two other people to share it with, so the price went down. But um. 
Yeah. So instead of having to do that six day hike back down, we got so worth it. Yeah. Helicopters are sweet. Have Have you ever been on a helicopter? Um, we're anti helicopter on this podcast. Oh shit! I, R.I.P. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Kobe. Why? Yes. Why? Are, why? Are, why are we anti? Didn't we have this conversation? None of us want to take helicopters. After what happened to R.I.P. I thought oh. we were talking about Kobe. I don't know. I didn't know we've discussed being anti helicopter. Yeah, though I never I, said I was anti helicopter. Right? Though I don't want to go on one. Yeah, I'm like, if I don't, they're need fun, to. man. It's scary, but it's fun. Like it, it. I took, I took a shorty. A shorty I had a while back. Um, we flew from Houston to Galveston in one. It was like a little romantic type vibe jump, and uh, it's it's. And then we like flew around the city and shit. It shit was romantic as fuck, man. Had a little glass of wine back. That shit was dope, man. It's just mm-hmm. I had to have the wine because I was a little like every now and then the turbulence gets me and shit. I want anything I'm flying in to be as large as possible. I don't want to be on a small plane. Which, I don't want mm-hmm. to be on a helicopter. Yeah, something that's mm-hmm. built. Yeah, I mean, I was flying in a lot of small <laughs> things on this trip. Yeah, yeah, I want thick boys only. Didn't you? Uh, didn't you land at the most dangerous airport? Yes. Yep. Uh, so I want to see if it's actually like the world's most dangerous runway. Last crash. I thought was that was in, in like Honduras. Um, this one I think is per plane flight. Luke Luck. So this runway, it's just like on the side of a mountain. And if you if you come in too short, you'll just slam into the mountain. Yeah, um, nah. Like search Lukla Airport. And yeah, it's nickname is the world's most dangerous airport. Um, Do you ever go on these trips and ex, you know, extravagant things that you do? And like halfway through, you're like, you know what, dog? Fuck this shit. I, I mean, I need, to get, I need to get the fuck up out of here. Um... Well, I mean, that's how I felt once I got up to base camp and I was like, I'm not going to do that entire hike back. I got to get the fuck out of here. Call in the <laughs> Stella Blue helicopter. Um, but yeah, I, I I honestly, I felt safe this whole trip. Probably the most dangerous thing I did was the three teaspoons of mad honey. Mom and dad, I <laughs> apologize. It was for scientific research. Um, but other than that, no, I... I felt safe when we were landing at the world's most dangerous runway. I didn't have like a good view out the window. So that made me feel more safe. Um, and I mean, I saw a lot of planes land and take off. I don't think it's too dangerous. I'm seeing it. Number eight kind of mid, honestly, who's number? Oh, one? really? Okay. Uh, number one, this has the airport in St. Martin, which now I question that list because that that's the one that you can go up to the fence and like the planes land right at the edge of the beach. Oh, I've, yeah, I don't think that's those. like dangerous. Wait, I... It says sometimes pilots have no, become known to become disoriented regarding their perceived altitude when operating under visual flight rules because they approach the runways over water. So I guess maybe um, that say, one in Honduras is for, I'd say the Kabul airport definitely <sighs> is the most dangerous. Yeah. Isn't that where that, yeah. um, Okay. Okay. <laughs> Donnie, are you familiar with the Hechi Airport in China? In Guangxi? <coughs> uh, no. H E C H I, that's listed as the second most dangerous. Okay. 2,200 feet above sea level on top of 65 mountains. Engineered, engineers leveled off the mountaintops to create a 1.4 mile long and 150 foot wide runway with a thousand foot drop on one side. The runway's so narrow it can only accommodate three flights an hour. Damn. Did you guys know there was actually a helicopter pilot who landed on the top of Mount Everest? No. Which I I didn't think a helicopter. I thought it was too, the air's too thin. Yeah. That's what I thought too. I think there's probably a YouTube video about it. But um, yeah, he just, so he, he never even got out of the helicopter. He just landed on the peak and then took off like five minutes later. Just say did it. Um, the first, yeah. yeah. Let's say the first and only did Didier Del Sal. Didier, uh, he's a Frenchman, and of course, <laughs> he did it back in two thousand five. He was there for th- three minutes. That's why. I, yeah, I thought the air would be way too thin. And that's why I always heard about it. Yeah. Um. 
But uh, yeah, would anyone here ever want to actually climb Everest? Not a chance. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Billy, Billy, Billy would absolutely yeah. climb Everest. I actually, uh, and uh, an American doctor died on Everest, I think, oh, two days ago. Jesus. Yeah. And it, it wasn't in some sort of climbing accident or anything. He just, he went to bed and didn't wake up, which can just like happen with the altitude. No, I see. I'm good. I'm not, everything works perfectly fine in Houston, Texas. I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah. Right here. No, I, I mean, it's not, it's not super high. Um, my bucket list. I was pumped to be able to spend some time at the base camp. It was almost like living on the moon. Um, but yeah, I didn't really feel the need to go all the way up. The hardest part and where most people die is called the Kumbu Icefall. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that first part because you're pretty much hiking on a glacier and like it can just change. Um, like it can the it will move. So actually hiking it at night is the safest time because that's when it's cold where the ice isn't going to like break apart. <sighs> But if you're hiking it on a warm day, you know, the the shelf of ice that you're on can just break and send you down into a crevasse. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's all scary shit. Did you see any of those? You know how on Everest they say that they can't get the bodies? Yeah, so we didn't go high enough yeah. to start seeing the bodies. But uh, apparently there's a lot of them. Um. And it's so wild, like Nims, the guy I was with, he runs a company where people sign up and pay him a lot of money mm -hmm. in the understanding that he's going to get them up to the top. But that's got to be such a stressful job. Yeah. You're like, all right. And most of the people who sign up for these trips have a lot of mountaineering uh, experience and things like that. But I'm sure there are people who sign up just because they're like, oh, I've always wanted to climb Mount Everest and might not like be prepared for the hike hmm. but he still has to try to get him up there um like right i've right now i've been seeing a lot of articles saying that tons of people are signed up to climb the mountain this year and there might only be like a a two-week window where the weather is like where the weather is optimal to reach the summit so uh -huh. it's just going to get really crowded up there and you can have like traffic jams like up at the peak of people just waiting to get to the top and that's where some people have died in the past hmm. um not for me man that's wild yeah was there any was there anything else in nepal that you uh did noteworthy um yes but um if we want to move on to the wonders of the world we could and then i'm sure like later when the videos are are actually dropping if there's a solid story i want to share i can hop back on yeah i don't want i don't want you to spoil the content now man for sure, for sure. yeah <laughs> well, i appreciate you sharing all that shit man that's just interesting you're a traveled man and way more adventurous than i am and i can appreciate that yeah but, uh you're way braver than i am i am not i'm a home by big dogs one of the guys i was with actually i'd i would like to get him on the pod because he's this scottish dude has to be the most most interesting man i have have ever met he's he's rode across the atlantic ocean <laughs> like he left left from portugal arrived in venezuela or something like that whoa yeah he's rode across that he um also canoed across the Okavanga Delta in Africa, which is filled with crocs and hippos. Probably, yeah, some of those dangerous shit. Yeah. Um, he used to be a British Marine. Um, he now does that show with Will Smith, you know, that like, um, like Our Planet or whatever, that nature show that Will Smith does. He works on that now. Um, How long has it been since I've taken the honey? Oh my god! Like fifteen minutes, Billy. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yes. Search. Are you? Are, oh no! I just walk on. No, I just started feeling. Uh, oh, it's called Welcome to Earth. Really out of it. 
Um, no, it's it's been 15 minutes. You're okay. Yeah. Okay. You're fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy's name is Aldo Kane. Um, he would come on the podcast, I think, for sure. He's done some crazy shit and also a very nice guy. Bet. Bet. We'll do the we'll do the exchange. That'd be that'd be, that'd be dope to meet him. Is uh Big T? I want to get you uh hopping in, man. Is there anything you got on your mind? Anything you pissed off about? Yeah, you teed off. You were talking to us earlier Bert, about something you maybe teed off about in like the f- near future. Um, no, I'm not teed off about that. Well, I'll 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 have a better report next week. I'm going to a Taylor Swift concert this weekend, and it's supposed to rain. So that's the only, uh, I, it's not the only drawback. I wouldn't be going to this of my own volition, but, uh, I, I guess I'll have more to report on Monday. We'll see how that goes. I'm so jealous of you. Okay. Wait, wait is the concert outside? Why is, why is the oh, radio yeah. factor? Yeah. It's oh, at yeah. Nissan stadium. How much, how much were the tickets? Am I allowed to ask? Uh, so I got them that we bought them like when they came out, we just got them. So they were like one seventy five. Okay. And the, the cheapest ones in our section are reselling for like 1200, which, uh, I, I have contemplated my girlfriend was like, she said, let's sell them and like go on a vacation. I'm like, no, I can't. I would, cause she's, she's looked forward to it too much. So I, so even I, I, she, I know she would like, even if she says that, I don't believe it. Damn. And you tell, and you said she had all kind of fits planned out for this. Oh yeah. She is, uh, she has purchased three outfits for one concert. Um, and now it's going to rain. So yeah, but get some raincoats and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that might suck. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll have a better idea. Uh, when we reconvene, do you mind texting us as soon as two su- your the two surprise songs come on and tell me what they are? Sure, Thank I you. will. Uh, I'll I'll be sure to provide updates. Thank you, G and I and Kelly Keeks keep a list of what's been played. Okay, and you have we have a first hand. I'm hoping experience. that like Nashville gets a little better show than everywhere else. I feel like that should be Hopefully. the case for artists from Nashville. You. Well, she's yeah. from even not though from she's Nashville. not, yeah, and she pretended to be like Southern for a while. But I, I feel like you'll get a good show. I also feel like you might get a good guest. You might get Tim McGraw. So I, I have uh, hypothesized that as well. And then she I sings Tim McGraw with Tim McGraw. She's done that before. I, I, I said that very thing. I would love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim McGraw concerts for anybody that hasn't gone, fantastic. He gets up at the beginning. He says, uh, "I don't know if y'all have been to any concerts of mine before, but I don't like." talk do anything we start doing the show and we sing until we're done and that's what he does and he just plays all the hits um but yeah so that'll be uh that'll be this weekend but yeah no right now i'm uh we're good love to hear it you're whelmed i'm whelmed yep love love to, love to see big t whelmed man um yeah, so if anybody, what's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, I was just going to ask if you wanted to talk about the Taj Mahal, <laughs> things of that nature. Yeah, and I was, I was about to say, wait, man, you definitely cut me off. It's all good. Um, so if anybody don't have nothing else, we'll get back into the topic of today, which was the wonders of the world. And I'll be honest, man, this was a lot less, because we, we each picked one, right? We each picked one, and we're all going to talk about our, our specific one. Like, I wish I had more information, I guess. I guess I could have went into the details, but it was just, I feel like the details were boring, actually, uh, when I when I, when I when I, when I did mine. So I guess we'll save mine, or should I come out with mine? Well, if it's boring, you should go first. Specifically, there's which wonders of the world we're doing. There's, like, a ton of different wonders of the world. Yeah, there's... there's the ancient wonders yeah the seven wonders of the ancient world the new seven wonders of the world as of 2007 and then the seven wonders of the world as of 2011 and then that's natural wonders and then there's this yeah then there's wonders from different countries but the himalayas i guess are one of the natural wonders of the world so we've already crossed that one off the list actually no what yeah mount everest is listed as one okay. wait 
finalists. Uh, this list was 2011. The new and seven wonders of nature. I couldn't. I couldn't find like a hundred percent solid list. Like there's lists all over the place of different kinds of world wonders. So I was yeah. just like, "Fuck it, we all just gonna like make up our own list." And then what we're gonna do at the end is like we're all going to give our thoughts about what a current wonder is yeah so i saw one list that had the empire state building listed and that's trash no yeah. empire state inside. building can cannot play in this no, era the first the first time i even <laughs> heard about the wonders of the world was king kong and the allegory was that kong is now the new eighth wonder of the world when it was the empire state building that's why he was climbing the Empire State Building. Empire State Building, not see like the Taj Mahal still looks cool. The pyramids, like still nobody knows like how those are there. Yeah. Those are still awesome. Uh, the Empire State Building, not even a top ten building in New York anymore. Okay, well it it I mean in its day, it can't play. <laughs> but with to the be a tower. wonder of the world, it needs to transcend time. If you if you it saw a, it was a flash in the pan, it had a good season. It was yes, a wonder. It, wonder. It's, you know what. You the know, Empire I'm State Building is Jeremy Lin. I'm just going to say it. Jeremy Lin. I'm just going to say it. Hig yep. Hig I'm just going to say Jeremy it. Lin. No, no. This is going to be controversial, but the Empire State Building got hit by a plane and didn't go down. Just saying. So are you blaming? That was a, so a three-person. That was like a four-person. No, person it was hang a on, hang B-29 on. bomber in World War II, and I think 1949. Oh, I have oh, never so once. You have plane knowledge. I'm just saying. I've never heard someone victim blame the I World did Trade not Center victim blame for 9/11. That is quite a take. I'm just saying it's built to test the time. I that that was a bad. I'm from New York. I can make that. So joke. you, I mean, uh, I guess it's nostalgic because you live in this era, right? And you're from that era, and you're from that region too. But I, I don't look at I, I don't need New York City's top five skyline. Not top five skyline in the world. Number one. By no, no, no. I'm talking about in America. Oh, in America. Uh, I think in America it's top five skyline. I mean, what even skyline. what even comes close? Chicago, Seattle, Seattle. Chicago's Chicago. got a great skyline. The, uh, the New LA. New York's uh, the OG Miami. skyline. L.A. is like eight different cities. There isn't a skyline. Chicago yeah, has town. more tall buildings than New York, I think. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say LA is better than New York. I just think it's I think it's up there. I, I, I t you talking about the one that actually takes pictures from the planes, Big T? Yeah, I, I do that when I'm finding that's, New York. That's fair enough. Pictures, Chicago I, does I, have I, some I, a couple good buildings. Seattle's is fire. So with the Dallas, Space Needle, Dallas I guess. Is dope with the ball with the ball. Dallas San Francisco is, ball. is is kinda cool. Yeah, that, with that with like the pyramid. Bridge. With with the, the bridge and the pyramid building that they have? Yeah, yeah. Um, Vegas? Uh, uh, nah. uh, we'll, nah. Let's save Vegas for later because I have some takes. We, we save Vegas for... Is it a wonder? We'll talk about that later. Oh, you so, got... You yeah. Got, okay. Now, okay. the OG wonders are the seven wonders of the ancient world. Yeah, th and, those... And the pyramids are the only ones still, left standing of those seven. Yeah. So yeah, I, if yeah. we want to start there, I chose the the, the Great Pyramids of Giza uh, because yeah, kick it off. they are, I mean, yeah, they're the, the last standing of the ancient world. And it is insane. Do you know that Cleopatra is closer to us now than the old, actually, wait, that might have changed recently. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, closer to us now than it, the actual pyramids being built. Yeah. Yeah, so like even back in Julius Caesar's day, yeah. they had like no idea who built the pyramids. They were just like these things are. I think they had been built like three thousand years before yeah. them, so they they had no idea where they came from really. With radiocarbon dating, they've only been able to put it between uh, twenty six hundred BC and twenty four hundred BC. There's a two hundred year gap. It could from, be older. Yeah, I mean there are. There are takes out there. Mm -hmm. The it's made up of two million stone blocks, and the craziest part about it is like a lot of the blocks came from around there, but a shit ton of granite came from uh, a granite like five hundred miles away. Yeah, and they still don't like like they say they floated it down the Nile, but how the hell do you float city building sized blocks? on the boats that they had back then. It's actually wild. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so it, they were originally covered in white casing made of glimmering limestone and but like over the years that slowly uh disintegrated through earthquakes and the sun's vandalism rays. probably yeah and there's no hieroglyphics in those pyramids really so it may have predated stone car like it's so insane they don't know how exactly they built it the main chamber is made of a granite coffer which like seems fine until you realize that you couldn't get that coffer into the pyramid through how it was built they must have built the pyramid around the grave um like n no one knows how exactly they built it yeah they say that it was made through you know you know stone men and just having tons of labor like just they were throwing like hundreds of thousands of men at it to like move these giant blocks and like but it like no one can actually estimate how they like really did it without machinery without uh you know a steam engine without like any of the technology today. And it's made a lot of people think that some ancient civilization had technology that we don't know about. And we haven't discovered that just disappeared with the time. Yeah. Like that sound vibration yeah. technology where like, they could like move blocks with sounds, like basically just singing at <laughs> stone could move it. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's all that, uh, Roger, what's his name? We talked about, Oh, him. um, yeah ancient Canadian. ancient apocalypse graham hancock graham guy? hancock yeah and it, it used to have a a golden capstone too at yeah, the top like that definitely got stolen mm -hmm. um what's funny about it is how every different cultures interpret it and how many people have stood in front of it so like alexander the great caesar uh you know i think napoleon napoleon uh i think hannibal i might be wrong on that i Maybe. think hannibal um H man, I think at one point. Um, H man, why does he? Why does H -Man he get a nickname? Did... Just call him Hitler, bro. Yeah, I, you, you I, gotta I, make I just, him cooler than I he know, was. I don't want him to be like. I don't want to say he's amongst the greats because he's a terrible person. Like amongst the great conquerors because he's a terrible person. Well, he never conquered Egypt, so didn't he? Wasn't he in front? I'm. Like he may have, <laughs> you call visited, him H man. He like, may have oh, visited the, the, the no. pyramids as like as just like a tourist, but the Nazis never conquered Egypt. Egypt remained neutral, but it was it was kind of controlled by the British Empire back then. Yeah. So they probably kept, okay. They did. so kept okay. the Nazis out. The West, so the Desert Fox and all that was North Africa, but never Egypt. Yeah. But now, who can name Come the? On. Is there is really is, is there any pictures of Hitler in front of the pyramid? I I couldn't find one. I don't Wait, know. Hitler in front? I don't think I don't think there um, is, bro. Why? Am I crazy? Is that just in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah, you might be thinking of Indiana Jones. <laughs> is, that where, yeah. is that where that was coming from? Yeah. I found no. I, I found an article that says. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like a picture with Hitler in front of the pyramids would have been pretty prevalent. I, I have never seen it. I, um, I haven't I seen wrong, it. I, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't Who know. Who have conquered? I did find an article that, said, that says Egypt didn't chill for the Nazis in World War II. Uh, shout out to them. Who conquered yeah. Egypt? You don't have to keep Googling. We we got to the bottom of it. Yeah. The Nazis <laughs> did I not. know. I know. I'm just, I, I think I'm forgetting other people like Saladin. Yeah. The, the Arab caliphates that expanded through there. Yep. Um, the Mongols did not. They got Mongols did not. They got beat by the mom Luke's who, who yeah. came out of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Now who can name these six other ancient wonders? Big T, go. I saw a list earlier. Now I don't remember uh, many of them. Uh, or any of them, I think. Think of a lighthouse. A lighthouse? Yeah. There's some there. I remember seeing a lighthouse. Don't remember where don't it's know. at, though. That was the lighthouse of Alexandria. Which was you. tall as fuck. It was like three hundred and thirty feat tall. That's pretty damn like big. A, thing. Solid. It, was, it was built. I'm in trying like, to go off of memory. Some kind of garden or something like that. Yep. Um. What? Which? What? What is? What is it called? 
uh, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. There you go. Yeah. That's the only one that um, people aren't sure if it ever existed or not because they can't find like all of the other ones. They have proof that it was there at one point. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, they can't like prove that they existed. But it would be pretty damn cool if they did. That was where the Iranian 1986-2000 year party was, right? Um, No. Wait, wait, where was... Babylon's in Iraq. Oh, yeah. What was that party that was thrown? Yeah, that was that was thrown like at the at the ancient capital of the Persian Empire. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, which was the most expensive party in the yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. Um I've been to Babylon, no big deal. I did not see any hanging gardens. But interesting. That was what, what, what Saddam other- overlooked, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting mixed up yeah. with. What are the what are the other ones just so we list them? The old uh, world. Oh, the the Colossus of Rhodes, which I thought that was cool. It's kind of like the Statue of Liberty. I think it's what the Statue of Liberty was based on. But this one was built in shit, was it? Built in 2 280 BC. I think it was around the same size as the Statue of Liberty and a lot of people said it like it was right at the entrance of the harbor at Rhodes and it had like one foot on one side of the entrance and the other foot on the other side. And so ships would kind of just like enter the harbor right underneath its legs, which is pretty cool. Pretty sure that's like a scene in Lord of the Rings as well. I was going to say Game of Thrones, I think, has a one like that also. Yes, I think so. Yeah. And both of those were based on the Colossus of Rhodes, which was real 108 feet tall that sounds I mean, about like what the statue of liberty is yeah i'm gonna keep it a buck man the only one that's even like stood the test of time was the pyramids the rest of these are kind of mid man yeah well there were a lot like, of a lot of earthquakes the pyramids i mean the thing about the pyramids is that they've all the pyramids across the earth have stood the test of time also because you can't really knock one down yeah like how would you push a pyramid over you can't yeah i think but like i don't i don't want to speak for arian but i think i echo your sentiment so i think we think the same thing even if these still existed they're not that cool the colossus of Rhodes yeah, looked pretty cool the colossus of Rhodes, like you're passing through. Yeah, that one. That dude. one, fine. The other ones like this. Uh, I just think it's me. I just think it's me. Like when you look at the pyramids and the lore behind it, and the possibilities and the things we're still uncovering, and the shit that you know, what I'm saying like the ducks that you know have all this quirky shit yeah. that's probably regular, but you know, still fun to talk about type shit about it. Fire. It's it's a, absolutely a world wonder. How do we get? But we're still like on the fence. We kind of know. We kind of don't know. A lot of speculation. The rest of these shits is like. This yeah, statue okay. of Zeus, forty feet tall. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> forty. Yeah. That's okay. Not... I, I'm not I kind of. I'm saying like, it's like yeah, it's, it's mid, man. It's... I feel like the bar was low initially, and like they wanted to do something to commemorate the entire world to be like, there's a whole bunch of interesting shit about our world. Look at the Great Pyramids, and after that, they was like, um, uh, and then there's a really cool forty foot statue. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of mid. Yeah, bunch of men. Um, all the Christians used to think that the pyramids were Joseph's granary. You know that story about Joseph and the granary. Uh, we're, like, I don't actually. Oh, uh, Joseph made like these giant twelve-mile stretch between Memphis and Babylon. They're pyramids which Joseph made in order to store corn. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear. That's that. That's how they justified the pyramids to Christians, and then there's like other stories that it was like Noah's. Like they were really Noah's Ark. It wasn't an actual boat. That's like where they survived the flood. What's really cool about the pyramids of uh, Giza is that they like you could lock yourself in there, uh, and like not and no one would be able to get in from the way they designed the doors. And there's also on their cornerstones there was a ball and socket joint to make them uh, resistible to earthquakes. That's wild. 
Yeah, the shocks. Yeah, kind of. Like I, I can't. <laughs> I don't really understand it. Uh, but they just were doing super advanced shit. Um, in case of earthquakes or heat expansion, I, I mean that ancient. I mean, yeah. Back then, it'd be so hard to actually chisel out all those blocks too because they didn't have like power tools they're claiming that they did it with you know iron tools iron and bronze and that there's just a ton of people doing it yeah because someone said if you like went to that quarry today and tried to just like yeah break out a block using an iron tool it would take you like yeah a hundred thousand men in a day to do 250 stones a day like yeah the the because you like one one person can only ch- chisel out like a cubic yeah centimeter of stone or something in like a day it's insane also were they able to create that much food to support that many people like the the like and then if they had like a they had like a graveyard on site for like all those workers didn't they yeah. find like a whole graveyard of people they're saying historians are now saying that they weren't all slaves because they found like paid craftsmen with coins in certain camps, but I think maybe it was probably a mixture of like, but I'm not sure, but like, it doesn't make sense. How do you not only, if there's all that manpower devoted to building the pyramids, how much of like, where else is the manpower that needs to feed those men? Like who are farming, creating food and working on other parts of society. And then if you add all those people up, does that encapsulate the population of Egypt at that time? Because if you have, you know, over like several hundred thousand people working round the clock, sh- like shifting tons and tons of ch- like gigantic pieces of granite down the Nile, like this, these pyramids seems like it's taking up the whole economic resources of yeah. Egypt, which I guess if you're the Pharaoh, like that's what you want your whole kingdom working on. But then like, what if someone attacks? So like, during the army? time... So during the time of the pyramids construction, the total population of the late old kingdom was 1.5 million to 1.6 million people. And hence the labor force, this is what they said. And hence such a labor force would not have been an extraordinary imposition on the country's economy. It's like directly hmm. answering your question. I, I don't know. This is, that's what the yeah. running, if there was ever a conspiracy, I want it to be true. It's this one. I, think I it want is. I want this one to be the one. I, I would love for the the construction of the pyramids to have been made by aliens, and I don't know how they whatever you know what I'm saying, like or it's like a vortex to another uh, dimension or something. Whatever. If, if there was ever one to be true, this the shit. I so I saw one that Atlantis was like a worldwide empire, and wherever they found pyramids were just Atlantis colonies. And like yep. all the ones they find in the forest. But then again, I think that's, that's like some Graham Hancock. Right yeah. There. But I think that's like a confirmation, like a, I don't know what the exact word is, but since pyramids can't get destroyed as that easily, cause you can't push them over. The only things that survived were pyramids. Whereas every other structure crumbled. So that's why we only find ancient pyramids. That makes sense. Yeah. Like when they used to study uh, armor on bombers, they were like looking at all the planes that got back to see where they got shot the most. And they're like, oh, that's where we should put the armor. Then they realize, oh, wait, no, we need to put the armor where they didn't get shot because all the planes that got shot down didn't come back for us to test. Mm, yeah. So they're like, oh, where these planes didn't get shot need more armor because that's their actual weak points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Is it. <clears throat> Is it, you, got any, you got anything else on the pyramids? It's just crazy. It's just nuts. It's just nuts. <laughs> it's just, it's just wild. Like maybe they were. It, yeah, cook, Billy. Really fuck it, cook, dude, bro. Dude, I mean, how? I get. I guess like when you don't have birth control, when you don't have that much going on, when every other people around you don't really have to worry about defending your kingdom because there's no other advanced civilization to like hey, that's, go after you that you can hey, concentrate on this stuff. And that's hella judgy though. You see, when you don't have that much going on, like you just shit on everybody's life during that period. Like, oh. just, like them niggas weren't happy. Them niggas weren't doing shit. They weren't <laughs> writing. They didn't have hieroglyph hieroglyphics. I mean, like, they had culture, bro. They had things to do. They didn't just get up and be like, "Man, I can't wait till future civilizations write about us." 
No, but I'm saying they had no real competition as a giant civilization. Like I feel like every other, uh, like city state around them probably had zero, uh, like they weren't concerned about someone attacking them while they're just building a giant pyramid. And 1.6 million, that's the population of, isn't that like the population of New York City? Wait, no. Uh, no. About 20% <laughs> of New York like City. Manhattan, maybe. <laughs> New York City Not is like, even, probably like, it's like 10, 8 or 10, or I would, I would mention like 8 yeah. or oh, 10, eight, something like yep. that. Of, wait, wait, of New York City. Yeah, yeah. I got that totally wrong. 1.6 is like Nashville. Yeah. So, which is a lot i mean it's a lot of people back then you know what i'm saying because you gotta think the world population now is around seven and a half eight billion yeah. so back then the world population was probably way lower so you know you look at that mathematically matter of fact we can just look that up why, why guess nashville couldn't build a pyramid actually could or could not no well, memphis, memphis could yeah <laughs> but that one's made out of glass yeah, should we should we get into the new wonders of the world? Yeah, I want to see what the world population was real quick. Uh, okay. I think it's like I feel like I read a new article every week where they're like, "We found this new chamber inside the pyramid." Like, yeah. why? We need to start sending some people inside to check out those chambers. What if there's actually a gigantic underground structure underneath the pyramids? Well, yeah, like some people think it was built around an even more, more ancient structure. Like it could have been, Underneath. yeah, like it, it could have been built around something that was originally built 10,000 years ago, which then like points to like a much more ancient civilization than we know of. What if like the most ancient civilization all went underground because the surface of the earth was too tumultuous with like meteorites and shit? And they're really... That's... um. Uh, in under earth in cappadocia earth. turkey they have these underground cities that yeah. could uh, that could hold like i think up to twenty thousand people could live underground yeah. i got to i got to go in one and they go down like 10 stories jesus um and so some people think like maybe those were used when there was all of these like when there was the comet impact yeah. and then just crazy floods and fires i mean the common impact that's what they're saying may have wiped out the mammoths plus yeah. humans hunting them to extinction um because i mean like what if under the pyramids there's just uh entrance to the center of the earth where yeah. there's like heat from the core that combines with some sort of like what if there's literally mole people living in the center of the earth and actually what if they're the aliens we see driving the ufos um yeah i don't know about that but like think about it <laughs> i do think about it this is my this is my imagine you see a mouse in your house you see a mouse in your house right with your spouse with your spouse um so you see your ma a mouse in your house and you're like did that blouse. mouse is that Jack McClaus? Is that more likely <laughs> to be a mouse that lives in my house, just somewhere I can't see, or is that mouse from another person's house and just ran into my house? I think okay, the, the rhyme, what, what, yeah, what, what are we doing? Right what are we talking about? Because like that's UFOs. Like we see UFOs well, in our sky. Do you think that UFOs from our planet or from another planet? Like what's no, more I think likely? Honey's hitting. One of the pilots reported seeing the UFO like coming, <coughs> coming out of the ocean, right? Yeah. Like, so what if they're is in wild. the center of the earth and just like they have like their, most of their gates are like in the ocean where it's deep. I mean, that'd be sweet. That'd be cool. I, I don't really know That's my, like, I what think, else to say. Like we're not alone. But, yeah. But yes, I did. I did confirm the largest underground city in Cappadocia could house twenty thousand people, which is insane. Think about the scurvy and vitamin D deficiency those people probably had. Yeah, I mean they would have some like portholes to let the sun in, but um, hmm. scurvy. If you're eating vitamin C but living in the dark, will you get? scurvy or as long as you, know, you I have... mix that up with vitamin D deficiency and vitamin C deficiency. Okay. Isn't scurvy the vitamin C deficiency? Yeah. So yeah. That's like... oranges and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They used to have no idea what 
cause that. So everyone who is like on a ship for three months, just eating like salted pork and crackers, yeah, would just start to get scurvy and die. And they're like, shit, what are we going to do? And it Limes. was, it was captain James cook. He's yeah. like, you just got to feed him some oranges and yeah. everyone's fine. Just put, just put a, a lime in the Corona. Yes. <laughs> and prevent scurvy. Lime in the grog. Navy grog. All right. So no more, no more Egypt stuff or you still want to, I'm letting you cook this, this episode, Billy. I'm cooked. He's cooked. <laughs> I feel kind of giddy. I don't know why. I wonder why that that's, is. That's good. Um, no, um, Sam Talent, he was just on the Joe Rogan show, and Joe gave him a spoonful of honey. And he actually, this was the same time that I had taken three teaspoons and uh -huh. was losing my shit. And he was like, oh, no, I had one spoon, and I was just having a great time on the pod. I was kind of giggly. So, yeah, you... You took a solid dose. Sweet. You don't have to worry about anything. Sweet. Um, what are some uh, Machu Picchu? Mad yeah, dog. Yeah, so how, we were. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, Aaron, no, Aaron, what were you going to say? You, you have. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to go around and, and see what else, because uh, we, all, we all picked different ones. And so I know, you, yeah, you was excited about Machu Picchu. Go ahead. Go ahead and kick it off. If you yeah. Want to. So I picked Machu Picchu and I, I knew it existed. Like I knew what it was. And like I studied it in eighth grade. Billy's looking at me all weird. Um, and I studied it in like eighth grade Spanish, but I did some research on it. So I was, I Arian, I kind of know what you're saying. With like it was kind of boring because I kept looking up like crazy shit about Machu Picchu, weird things about Machu Picchu, conspiracy theories about Machu Picchu. <laughs> Not what Billy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And not a ton of, like, weird things were coming up. It was, like, all just, like, notable things about Machu Picchu. And so this is going to be just more educational. But it's still a fun time. Machu Picchu is very interesting. Um, but, oh, I mean, like, are you okay, Billy? Anyways. Yeah, I'm doing fine. He's literally fine. Anyways, so I didn't realize, so Machu Picchu is in Peru. I did not realize that it connects to mountain peaks. Like, it's in between two mountains. And so one end is on one mountain peak and another end is on the other, which I thought was interesting. And it's like, so you get to um, the city that it resides in in Peru, which I'm blanking on the name of it, and it's below it. So the city that it presides in in Peru is extremely high. Like, I think it's like 2,500 meters above sea level. And then you have to go down 1,000 meters to even get to it, yeah. which in my brain, I'm thinking it's the opposite. Where it's like you got to climb up to Machu Picchu. Yeah, I always assume that too. Right. I did too. Yeah. Um, that's what that's what it was explained to me as. If I'm wrong, let me know. But, um, it's also made of granite, which, again, in my brain, I don't know a ton about rocks. Granite seems like a crazy thing to make that out of, just because I'm thinking like granite countertops, but like that's heavy shit that you're. <laughs> I can't look at this. That you're forming this huge yeah transporting and doing all this with so um the incas made this in the early to late uh it would be i think 15th century if i'm doing my math correctly it was Dude, in like the 1400s. 1400s yeah yeah uh, and they disappeared so hold on i'll get there yeah so um if you know the, the how the machu picchu looks it's in the middle it has the Intihuatana, which is that sundial, and then twice a year, they aligned the sundial with the rotation of the sun. So on the summer and winter equinox, it casts zero shadow, which gives me alien vibes. Because it's nuts that they nailed that. Well, I think <laughs> they had not much to do, so they yeah, were staring except... at the sky. I guess. Seeing white blood cells in their yeah. eyes. Yeah, it's like if you have nothing else to do. But yeah, so two times a year, there's exactly zero shadow, and that lines up with the equinoxes of summer and winter, which I thought was interesting. That's pretty cool. I know. Um, and they align everything with like the sun, like the Incas do, because they're, um, ru it's believed that their rulers came from like a solar deity. So they believe that basically their god came from the sun and came from the sky so they took the sun very seriously which then makes sense 
as to why they looked at the sun so closely because they took it as like signs from God of like your shadow and everything. Hmm. And then again, this isn't, this is just me like coming to a conclusion, but like on the summer and winter equinox where there's like no shadow, it's like God is preparing a new season for us or their God. I don't know. Um, And then I was like doing more research on the Incas and they, I was watching a video of people looking at Inca skeletons and they would have these elongated skulls because if you had a short king as a kid they would wrap tight cloths around their head to lengthen their skull to make it look taller or what if they were aliens or what if they were aliens because their skulls would be like slanted and look like um the cone heads what if they're trying to look like the gods that came down right but they wanted them to look taller so they would wrap their cloth around their kids heads when they were like still soft and then it would basically make your skull yeah. higher and then make you have the appearance of looking taller which yeah. i thought is crazy town imagine doing that to your own kid yeah you're like come here oh the, you know what no the incas didn't disappear the mayans disappeared yes. no the incas disappeared <laughs> Well, but we kind of know why died. they disappeared. They and, think it's a smallpox epidemic, but they don't know the real reason yeah. I learned. Well, and like they're... I think the, the Europeans had contact with the They Incas. still like, yeah. like... By the time the, the, Europe, the conquistadors came, they were gone though. Too. Oh. No, the conquistadors had to fight them. There was like a big oh, war. Oh, really? Pizarro was, versus the Incans. Yeah, it was yeah. like a big uh, war. What the I was Aztecs, reading is that the conquistadors were already or there when they were gone. The Aztecs in the... Oh, and that was the case with Machu Picchu. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Machu Picchu disappeared. Incas were there. Um, Mayans disappeared. That's yeah. where 2012 comes from. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, the craziest thing I know about the Incans is they never had the wheel. So when they were like building Machu Picchu, they had no help of like a wheel they just, to, like, dragged to it. transport it. Yeah. yeah Apparently they just said that blocks were just dragged. <laughs> or maybe they put some blocks in like, a llama because they did yeah, yeah. Yeah. domesticate llamas are huge lla- there they try to ride llamas when the when the conquistadors came because of the horses but the llamas just weren't about it no they weren't they weren't ride or die yeah their backs weren't bred over like <laughs> they spit too. hundreds of thousands of years to accommodate humans um llamas yeah. still spit you can also i was reading it if you go today to machu picchu you can like take selfies with llamas and apparently they like smile and pose they won't ask you to suck their tongue, though. True. <laughs> no. Also, no, because they, they can't speak English or any language. Uh, but yeah, so the llamas are huge there. But I also, so speaking of like the wheels, the Incans, when they were building Machu Picchu, built each stone so exactly that you couldn't even, they were so bound together, you couldn't fit a razor blade through them. And they didn't use any molding device. They just pushed them so, so exactly together that they have stood the tests of time and they made them basically like earthquake proof. Oh. Yeah, that's insane cuz like this all gives me alien I mean again, maybe it's just I'm so fucking dumb and like I could never even think about doing something as crazy as this. But like that like how? Some of the blocks that the Incans used were even larger than the blocks used to build the pyramids. Yeah, they I mean it's they're like, not small. Like they're they're like my wingspan. And you would, and they would carve them exactly correctly, so that they basically laid on hmm. top of each other and didn't need this any looks binding. Like a fire place to live, dog. Peru. Like, well, just I'm looking at like the ruins, right? When you look at the ruins, just think about it, it's like all brand new, and the grass is still green, and you got people, and you got markets, and walking around, and like that's just a cool little town to be in, dog. And you don't cocaine. Mind sacrificial shit. Mm. Okay. That's probably how Coca they did leaves. it. Coca leaves. Boom. Apparently, chewing those leaves helps you deal with the altitude. I heard that if you like land in a airport in Peru, they just have like, if like they just have bag, like not bags, but baskets of them. Yeah. To grab and chew. Yeah, hmm. that's what all of the hikers there do. They just chew the leaves. But yeah, so, um, lots of that. I didn't see anything about cocaine use with the Incans, but. They definitely, they definitely chewed coca leaf. I mean, it was there. But does does that give you that same? I've never done cocaine, but like, does that give you the same high? I uh, I don't think it's as intense, but right because it's not going into like your bloodstream. Not, but hyper, yeah, 
but you 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 feel something they're sure. sacred religious yeah the sacred coca leaf of the incas the coca leaf was sacred to the incas it had properties to help withstand hunger fatigue and s-o-r-o-c-h-e which i cannot pronounce hmm. sounds a lot like cocaine yeah but then what is saroche <laughs> but going back to the heads if like you're so they think that Machu Picchu and like the Incan culture was like kind of like America in terms of like a melting pot of different types of people. So the whole cloth with the head tied around it, it would mark you as like a certain culture. So like if you came from a different place, Billy, than I did, then you and I would have different shaped heads. Whoa. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Which, how many shapes can your head be? I actually know someone who recently had a kid and I guess the kid was lying on its back too much and it had a really flat head so now it has to wear a helmet to kind of reshape its head i've seen the helmet have, thing on kids yeah you gotta have yeah. tummy time yeah tummy time. but she really doesn't want the kid to wear the helmet because she was like it looks so weird but i'm like well just have him wear the helmet now and then it'll look normal when he's older in school if he doesn't yeah, wear the helmet now weird. he's gonna yeah. get made fun of in school but what yeah for Wait, having a flat head a doctor recommendations i like it's too weird. Yeah, what do you mean, bro, take care of your. It's like, dude, your, your kid's scene, gonna man. be getting what? bullied in eighth yeah. grade if he doesn't wear the helmet now. Or well, freshman uh, year of college, we had to all shave our heads uh, when we won a championship game, and uh, just so funny because so many dudes had weird shaped heads. We just had no idea. Who had no idea that their own heads were shaped bad till they shaved their head for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, the helmet thing is like really common now. I mean, now I guess because okay, well, the baby's got the soft heads. Did like like Aaron? Did your kids ever have to wear a helmet? Like, I think it's like, more common than you think. Uh, no, I never. I, I have I've seen kids, but I've never I've never experienced it. Yeah, because um, if you have like a vaginal birth, then they're it's basically like, and your your head gets what coned. <laughs> like if your baby like if your baby comes out of you and it's just like it was a little squeezed in there, that's how your head gets misshapen like that. Yeah, nah. But then yeah, there's will, their, their they tissue's go, still soft enough to form. They, it's like Play-Doh. That's what happened yeah. to Rocky, uh, Sylvester Stallone. What? Like he had a weird birth and that's what, how he made like his, uh, let me look up yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. It's something to do with, it's something <laughs> with like four that. steps. That and that's why he sounds weird today. Sylvester, yeah. Grove, Grove I don't Billy. think he sounds Should, weird. Uh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone, he's, he's got... A I mean, I just feel voice. like yeah, he has like a distinctive voice. I don't complication know. during labor forces his mother's obstetricians to use two pairs of forceps during his birth. Misuse of the forceps accidentally severed a nerve and caused paralysis in parts of Stallone's face. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, so he'd be like... Oh, because yeah, he kind of like, does like that, well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about. Right. Yeah. They got that nigga out with like some pliers. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, man. Um, so that was Machu Picchu. You got anything else to add, Machu Picchu? Um, to kind of put it into perspective, the same time that Machu Picchu was getting built, Leonardo da Vinci was painting the Mona Lisa. Whoa. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. The Incans were were also the world's first communists. Hmm. I think hunter gatherers were the first communists. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Well, they they were like, like organized a communists. developed organized society that they like stockpiled all their mm. food together, like they kind of just shared everything. I read this really awesome book, The History of Debt, and it talked about how on the f surface like all groups were communists because they would bring every everything they hunted gathered together into one place and mm. then would just share but the thing tying them together was debt like was societal debt and debt to each other like feeling like you had to give something be it to your the guy you went hunting with or your guy like your wife your like so community because, yeah but the thing is their argument with that is it all has to do with a certain type of debt to each other which is capitalist and that's how they justify it <sighs> Oh, but it's horrible. But read it. Read it. Oh, read it. I, I know it's horrible. I know it's horrible. Read it. Oh, it's, it's a, a horrible analogy yeah. saying your debt to society yeah. is capitalism. Yeah. What? But your no debt sense. to each other. Like, I feel like I owe you this because and therefore we are for corporate profits at all costs. Yeah. Fuck out of here. I, I'm not a big. It does. It makes you think a lot. 
And that makes me think zero. But I'm sure you're there's it's a deeper argument. Yeah. One last thing about the Incans. They didn't have a writing system, but they had these things called chupus, which were like these uh, strings with knots in them. And they could literally use those strings and knots to pass on certain information. So that was their one way of storing knowledge. Like a string uh, decimal? Like, yeah, search Q- Morse code. Q-U-I-P-U, Q-Poos, and you can see a photo of them. Um, like, that's what they used instead of writing. Just these, like, crazy knot string contraptions. Oh, wow. And so they had, like, a like an alphabet, like a system? Yeah, like, oh, if this rope had two knots, it meant something. If this rope had three, it meant something. Almost like a Morse code, but on a string. Yeah, collecting data, keeping records, monitoring tax obligations, collecting census records, calendar information, and military organization. Of course, stored numeric and other values encoded as knots, often base 10 positional systems. That's wild. A few thousand cores. Configuration. That's pretty dope, man. Yeah. You probably, you probably had a whole bunch of like jewelry and necklaces like with names on them and shit. Yeah. Like relationship bands, friendship. That's just fire. That's dope, man. Dope. All right, man. Machu Picchu. Uh, I think the next one, I'm going to do mine because I think it's going to quick. And Donnie, honestly, you probably can know more about this shit than me. But when I was reading up, I just got very disinterested in it. I don't know. Sue me. But um, I did the Great Wall of China. All right. And the the Great Wall. So, I mean, I thought it was going to have all kind of interesting shit about it. And it was just like, wah, wah. I, that's just to me. And maybe you can tell me more interesting things about it. But, I mean, the, the basic of the nutshell is uh, it was built by, like, multiple states in the initial. Um, I don't want to fuck this name up, but I want to. Xuan Chou, period. Uh, and it was to protect against nomadic raiders like the Mongols and the Turkish. And there was another one that I couldn't pronounce, uh, pronounce as well. Um, so originally it was it was to keep out. So they were the original Trumps build that wall. Uh, so there was it was, to, it was to keep out people from the northern uh, tribes from from raiding. And as predicted, it, it didn't never really go that well. Um, so they decided to expand it, and they kept expanding it. Um, and as the, a new regime came. Emperor Ting Shuang. Ting Sh- I, I'm fucking it up. Apologies. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Uh, so he uh, unified every the whole state. And so in 2021, he decided to connect them all. And in all, I think it was, I pulled it up, uh, 13,000 miles. And it was just never really that sufficient. Um, uh, and uh, they did end up using it for various different reasons. Like, uh, um, the, I think the most modern use was, I think, in World War II, I believe, uh, Japanese invaders. They used it as some kind of defense uh, uh, system to kind of, like, you know, fight around it. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty useless. But it's just, it's a very historical, a lot of history written, a lot of traveling on it, stuff like that. I think a lot of tourists come to see it. Um, and it's, uh, I guess it's like a... Just like any other ancient monument, it, it was built uh, by a, a head of state, used forced labor, some volunteer, some indentured servitude, a, a mixture and combination of all three. Um, yeah, and it's 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 I guess it's a staple. But um, again, uh, there there are some things in it like um, they had these the one parts where um, there were like towers. And they use like smoke signals to communicate to each other from one to another. Um, little trap, little trap things on the top to where you can shoot arrows from the top and then open holes in the middle so you can cannonball folks from the bottom. I love how we are so inventive ways to kill each other. Mm-hmm. Super dope. Um, uh, yeah, man. So I mean, I, altogether, it was from my little research. It's, it's. It's a great accomplishment. I, I don't think that it accomplished that much, especially originally what they thought it was going to, but ended up just kind of being a staple. And um, a lot of the lore that mm. I remembered it for turned out not to be true. Like, whereas, like, so you can see it from the moon. Yeah, that's true. They said it's the only na- man made monument that you can see from the moon. Um, that I don't think that part was true, but there's a certain height you can see that. 
but at that same height you can see a whole bunch of other shit as well and so it it, it, it it's just not as um mm -hmm. uh, nostalgic as i remember it um but that was i mean short and sweet man but if there's, if there's anything i'm missing things we would talk about shoot but i just found it very horses womp, womp. horses is the big one it stopped like the mongolians were so like good at conquering everybody is because they were the best horsemen and probably one of the first people to use horses in battle and uh the wall stopped the horses it didn't stop the people from climbing over and then opening the small gates to let the horses in but it stopped the big horde that used to just literally run up on people with like no like the way the reason the mongols almost literally conquered all of europe and like literally almost conquered all of Asia and everything is just because they were the first people to like roll up on cavalry. And then everyone sort of was like, Oh, we need some horses and everyone caught up a little, but they were the OGs. And the only way they could stop them at the time was just build a gigantic wall because people can climb walls. Horses is harder. Horses cannot. Yeah. I don't have that <laughs> much to add. Um, I will say though, seeing it in person, it lives up to the hype. It's okay. It's one of those tourist attractions that's worth the hype. It looks really fucking cool. We actually camped out on it for a night, and my friend took a dump off the side into a plastic <laughs> okay. bag, and then had okay. to toss the plastic. Can you bag. see? The, is there is there a lot of light pollution where you were? Could you see the star, or was it kind of too close? Um, I don't know. I don't remember seeing the stars a lot in China. There's yeah. a lot of smog, so, but so I figured. What do you what do you th what do you feel about this? Because I'm like on the. I don't think I'm on the fence. So they they have launched like a lot of these ancient monuments. They launch like, um, you know, restorative projects and res uh, preservation projects to like keep it up. And but I I'm not sure we should do that. What do y'all What do y'all feel for the Great Wall of China? I'm just talking about in general. Like I th I think the one that we should maybe be Egypt. Um, but I think we should just explore it. I don't think we should preserve it necessarily. Like but, you don't want to like you don't want to add on to it with yeah, like that because then it like materials. takes away. From, yeah, it, it takes away from what we're actually, you know, what, what we actually revere about it. I could be wrong, no. Yeah, I mean, if you just rebuild something on top of it, then it's no longer super ancient. So I can see so, where uh, you're coming from. It's that old philosophy question. So like if, if you build a boat, right? Let's say me and you build a boat. And on the boat, we have all the materials on the boat to fix the boat in every with every part, right? So we're we're traveling on the boat and we go on the boat and uh, a piece of a piece of wood falls off, but we have a piece of wood on you know underneath to patch that up. And by the end of our journey, every single piece of the boat has fallen off, but we have replaced it with an entirely different boat is it still the same boat how yeah are we the same people every seven years because our cells totally replicate and replace us even your brain cells yeah wow i don't think that's i don't think it's the brain cells i think every seven years our body has totally replaced dead cells with new cells and we're entirely new let me look that up how long? No, I could, I've heard that about our cells, like every other cell. But I thought brain cells, like neurons and stuff, I, like is that is that the case? Uh, hmm. Do neurons replenish. Seven to ten years, on average, the cells in your bodies are replaced every seven to ten years. Yeah. Hmm. Is that every cell? Uh, the cells in the middle of your eye lenses will last your entire life. Okay, so that isn't entirely true. Yeah. But that's just like... Yeah, nerve cells do not renew themselves either. So your nerves don't either. But don't listen to that. Your life can change exponentially. Like this place you are at now is not where you will be forever. Okay. Uh-oh. Do we, we walk into inspirational, Billy? Onward, <laughs> yeah. upward. You can yeah. do it. Okay. Even yeah. if you don't believe in yourself now, you'll be a totally new person then. Yeah, well, odds are you probably can't do it. So no, you can't. Be realistic. You should be realistic. You can't. Goals, though. Okay. Run through that brick wall. Back to your point, Arian. Like when I went to Babylon, 
the first, like only the first six feet of the walls are the actual ancient walls. And then the rest were all just rebuilt by Saddam Hussein. So they, like, and you can clearly tell, you can like see where the old bricks stop and then, and the new bricks start. And so it looks a lot cooler now, but yeah, like most of what you see there was just like rebuilt by Saddam. Yeah. I feel like that a lot, a lot the older monuments and stuff is like, we could remake way cooler shit now. Like I, we, we just get caught in nostalgia. Like a lot, we can make way. I mean, like, we, not, my house is fire. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> We can we can make a whole bunch of way cooler shit. We just get caught in it, and it just but it just make no sense to put old ass or new ass brick on some old ass brick. But we, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the point. We never build shit to last anymore. Like I, I read a whole like we, your boys, we, man. Cost efficiency. Well, also the inflationary system that we use when it comes to debt. Uh, like anyway, but like we're not putting what. The, yeah, that's why there's more cheaper construction so that like, you know, you can tear it down, build something new, like keep yeah. renovating it and refining and yeah, keep, keep the money train rolling. Yeah, keep getting, you know, more loans to like re-upping stuff. Yeah. Cuz if you have a Profit. build, yeah. Yeah, like someone said if like if humans were wiped out tomorrow, the pyramids of Giza would still be along, would still be there a lot longer than a lot of our modern buildings. Yeah. Empire State might still stand. I don't know about that. <laughs> What's your thing with the Empire State? Did you like the song? Or was, no, no, no. Was, <laughs> it took a North American B 25 Mitchell bomber, which might be. I don't know shit about planes, man. But it's a I'm big sure. one. It's, yeah. I remember seeing a photo of that plane. It did not look that big. That was the other plane that hit it. Oh, okay. You think, it's been you hit by multiple the, planes. You think that's the best building in? No. Okay. No. No. All right. It's a mid. It's a mid. It's a mid, it's a mid it's, building. Empire State Building. No, mid. I'm. I'm just like a fan that it's like. It was built to. La I don't know. It's just like an American. I mean, a, a New Yorker's sort of pride, like the Empire State Building. Yeah, like I got, I got you, bro. Yeah, I'm not from there, so it, like, yeah. it don't hit me like that. Yeah. All right, man. That 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 wraps up the Great Wall of China. If anybody else has something else to add? Uh, there's a really cool slide that you can take from the top of it all the way down the hill. That's probably the most fun part of visiting the Great Wall of China. Uh, it, How long? I'm is down that? to go. It lasts like five to ten minutes or something like that. Really? Five for five minutes? What? I feel like I was on that for five minutes and I almost hit a goat. There was like a goat walking across the slide when I was cooking down that thing. Could have got pretty hurt if I just slammed into a goat at full speed. Five minute slide would rock. I, I, I feel like it's a five minute slide. Um, all right. But yeah, that's, that's all I have. We can move on. Um, yeah, let's pivot. Uh, big T, what did you, uh, what did you choose? The I Taj have Mahal? I have the Taj Mahal. Does anyone here not know what the Taj Mahal is? Why it was built, or does everybody know? I I mean I feel like I know, but it's it, kind of it, it. it's it's kind of become like an internet meme. But uh, the guy who built the Taj Mahal was the the original simp. He was uh, Shah Jahan. He uh, he ruled in the 1600s. And his favorite wife of his many passed away and mm -hmm. he, uh, built the Taj Mahal. It's basically just her grave. It's a mausoleum. Um, and, uh, it cost about a billion dollars in today's dollars, which seems like a pretty good deal to me. Stadiums cost more than that now. And they don't look as cool as the Taj Mahal. Most yeah, of them. Yes. So I feel like he he got a pretty good deal on it. It took about 20 years to build. Um, what I didn't know, his other wives that he didn't like as much have tiny little uh, mini, mini, mini Taj Mahals on the the property elsewhere. So Love they get, yeah, so his favorite wife gets that and they get a little marker somewhere on there also. Um, yeah, I was fucking with y'all too. I like it. Yeah, but uh, he was he was really just a simp, 
and uh, he built that as a <laughs> as a monument to his favorite wife. What's really or a cool. romantic? Damn. What's really those aren't cool. mutually exclusive. Boucher. It didn't even get him laid because she's already dead. Yeah, but gone. You, you know what's ridiculous? There was actually it, the Taj Mahal never got finished. There was supposed to be across the the river. From the Taj he Mahal. wanted one of his own. Yeah, he wanted a black Taj Mahal. So all white and then an all black one, but it never got finished because his sons were like warring because uh, he had so many wives and, you know, they all had a bunch of sons. And then it was like, who's going to be the next, you know, emperor, like dude, uh, who is him? So they were all fighting. His, his stuff never got completed. But now they're like thinking of actually completing it. And there was supposed to be like a connecting tomb so that they could like be together forever. Hmm. Yeah. Also, I think there's that thing that, like, when all these super powerful emperors, kings, uh, rajas got to the point where, like, I want my legacy to last, I'm going to build something so cool that even if you invade my country, you don't want to rip it down. I think that was, like, their thought process behind all that shit. Yeah. Because, like, even today, like, uh, I think even in World War II, they they purposely didn't try to bomb uh, heritage sites. Yeah. Do people worship there? I don't think so. I think it's just uh like it's not really a religious thing. It's just his uh his thing for his wife. Uh, it, the Hagia Sophia in Turkey was a Greek Orthodox church that was converted to a, a mosque. mosque. Yes. Did that happen to the Taj Mahal? No, uh, I don't know. The Hagia Sophia is huge. When you see that thing, and it was oh, it's it was built a long time. No, ago. you yeah, it, it. I think it's technically. It was built by Muslims. No, no, no. It, the Taj Mahal. It was built by uh, Constantinople. I, we're talking about two different things. Sorry. It it was it was built by the Byzantines, so the right. like the Eastern Roman Empire. Yeah, I'm talking about the Taj Mahal. Any mausoleum which is built should be accompanied by a mosque, uh, according to Muslim law. So the Taj Mahal was built with a mosque. Okay. You can worship at the Taj Mahal. Okay. Cool. It also flanks a, a garbage-strewn river, it says here. Uh, which which one? <laughs> the Taj Mahal. No, but which which uh, river? Um, is it the Ganges? Uh, I don't know. Um but, I want to do it. So, what's so crazy is that there's so many rivers that stem from the Himalayas that are religious. Yes. I want to. Yeah. Isn't that insane? I saw one of them and they were, they were cremating bodies in it. Yeah. Everyone it was, just throws dead people in it. So they weren't throwing just dead bodies right, right. in the river, but I actually got to see dead bodies being burnt on the banks of the river. Yeah. And but it, and it was yeah it's like a very sacred river but you would think they would keep the sacred rivers a, a little cleaner because it was like they go there to kind of like burn their loved ones in it but it, it's also a filled of trash it's kind of sad to see. Have you seen those TikToks that are like uh, historical places zoomed out? Yeah, it'll show you like a picture of the Taj Mahal and then a picture of Taj Mahal with that with the river and then there's the pyramids oh, yes. and yeah, yeah. all these things and how they look now. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, so the Ganges, the Indus River, the Yamuna River, all these rivers that are, like, sacred to Buddhists, uh, Hindus, and, like, the Indus River is, like, the foundation of civilization, all from the Himalayas. Yeah. No, that was very cool to see. And, hey, I wouldn't mind, like, Ganges. when I die, I wouldn't mind my, my body being burnt on the banks of a river and then, like, the ashes drifting down it. I'd be cool with that. Blow me up in a rocket ship. In space. You're trying to go to space? Yeah. Okay. Study me. If you have 125K, I can get you to space. Well, don't. don't right now? It. Yeah. Well, in like in like a year. You probably have that I'm lying around from, somewhere, right? I do have 125K. Talk to me. What are we talking about? <laughs> Check out the space perspective. It's like this balloon that goes like right up to the edge of space and then you get to hang out there for like four hours and have a cocktail party. And tickets are only 100, 125K. You can get faded? You can get faded on the edge space? of space. Yep. You should get a finder's fee for that. Um, I can put you in touch with the right people. I need to pee. I mean, 
Portnoy could afford that so easily, but I don't think he's the type of guy that would want to go to space. I mean, I'm sure you could probably afford that, Aaron. I don't know. I could, yes, yeah. but uh, <laughs> would it be worth the no, investment? Absolutely. I mean, there'll be a there's a handful of niggas in the world who have ever seen space, bro. I would love to see space. And you would be 000. you would be up there sipping cocktails. Yeah, drinking, having a good recording this shit. Yeah. What? Yo, okay. <laughs> this is fire. I'm looking at the. I think you should do it. With a camera looking out a window with the stars behind it. This is fire. I'm surprised you would do that, actually. Space different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I have the. Okay, you know how you feel about Jesus, bro? That's how I feel yes. about space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. I'm, okay. That, that's, that's how I feel about space. Like, like, I feel like that is. And this is, this is, this is like. I have no proof of this, right? This is why this is the, how you feel about Jesus, how I feel about space. It's like, I feel like we are so connected to the universe, but we have fucked this up, this experiment down here so much that I'm like over it, right? And so I feel like I, I feel this um, soul pulling, don't even believe in souls, but soul pulling awe about space that just gra it led me to like study physics. I got into Einstein because of it, because they studied the shit, right? Astrophysics. So I, 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 you know, independently just researched it on my own for no, no other reason that I'm just in awe of space and in awe of uh, the wonders that it holds and the things that we haven't discovered yet and the things that we have discovered and the, and the, and the beauty of it. And it's just on every level, I'm fascinated by it. And if, Aside from praying to it, like I feel the awe that you feel about Jesus. That's how I feel about the universe and space. Interesting. Yeah. Sounds like he's going to space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to look into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to look into it. My, um, my financial planner has this thing with his company <laughs> for all of his clients. I've never done one. I'm sure he's going to give me one for this, but for... All of his clients, uh, if they feel like you're about to purchase something stupid, they make you sign. A, they have a stupid purchase contract, and and so it's like they word it really funny. They're like, "This is something that we disagree with. We don't think that you should we you should buy this, but it is your money, and so we just want you to sign this so that later on we have proof that we told you this is a stupid purchase." And I'm I'm almost positive they're gonna give me one of these if I say I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a financial planner like that. <laughs> that that's a good financial yeah, planner. That's great. Yeah. They're the best. They're amazing. Yeah. I think he, he might be like, no, man, that sounds sick. You should go do it. Does yeah, but I don't know if it, I, I think the only way it's worth it is if I record it and find out a way to monetize it in a way that is really dope. Right? Like Yes. You like, can, you like could also up there some shit that and we can go on to like views and stuff so we can yeah, that would make sense actually. The yeah. only way it would make sense. And you could maybe so find be... a sponsor to like chip in for part of it. You could raise money for charity somehow. I don't know. There's a lot of ways yeah, to go about it. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to put this one. I'm going to cook on this one, Donnie. What's yeah. the, what's the best stupid purchase contract you've heard of? It'd be, it'd be mostly like materials, like cars or chains or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, or a boat. Sh man, shit. This, I haven't seen it. This would be the best one. I think this might be the best. I think it's going to be, sure. I think it's going to be so good. They won't even charge you. They won't even make you sign the document. No, it's my money. I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, they, sorry, not charge you. I meant like they won't make you sign the document. I think they might, man. I think they're going to like, Oh, you can go to space. That is an experience that's worthwhile. So also it takes you to the edge of the stratosphere. So you might not technically be Wait, in this, orbit or in space. Is this that space? Is that that space that uh, space Bezos launch? went to? No, no. He actually was up in space. This Bezos goes... was lower than the highest airplane, which I don't count. Really? If an airplane, yeah, I think he was only either a hundred feet higher than the highest plane flight. That doesn't count. So this, you go up one hundred thousand feet. Highest how how far? One hundred thousand feet. Okay, so the highest plane flight was 
76 oh, so it's not like so the so the but i the think layers go, the layers go trop trop troposphere which is zero to 10 kilometers stratosphere which is 10 12 to 50 kilometers mesosphere 50 to 80 kilometers thermosphere uh 80 to 700 kilometers and exosphere is the last one and then you add it there so you so you will be high enough to confirm that the world is not flat. That's what they should do. That's what they should do. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I will chip in on this. I will chip in on this. Flat Earthers should all get together at their little Flat Earth conference. They should pick the guy. I think Eric, a dude's name Eric Holder, who makes all those Flat Earth videos, right? Man, pick the most the the most trustworthy anti-government. The globe is flat, nigga. That y'all think is the real one. Pick the one, the chosen one. We all chip in and send that motherfucker to the stratosphere and have him report back, though. That would be amazing. No, but you know what they do? It's the same thing they did to uh, what's his Ew. face who went across the Antarctic. Uh, Colin O'Grady. Yeah, Colin O'Grady. Who like he he's like one of the only people that traveled past the ice wall. That could be like the Earth's round. I went from one side of the Earth to the other by walking. Like they they just say, oh, they they compromised him. That's that. That's what it would be. Of course like, it would. Of course. It yeah, would. they'd be like, "Oh, it'd be funny to, yeah. to see him." I would like to see him squirm, like on some like, like, like I saw this shit, right? I was yeah, up there. I saw good. the curve. I think yeah, they, they justify the curve that since your eyeballs are curved, that's why it looks like it's curved. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what they said. Like, yeah, you think you can see the curvature of the Earth when you look at the ocean, but it's just because your eyeballs are are round. They have a whole bunch of silly shit that they say. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, Kenzie, did you uh, did you do one? Are you you don't you don't you chilling? Um, I had the Coliseum. Talk um, to us, man. Let's do it. But yeah, it was built in like as a gift from the emperors at the time to the people, because was it? I think it was something had like burned down in that area, um, and it's also called it was like the Flavi flavian emperors i don't know if anyone knows how to pronounce that um but they built it as a gift to the roman people and then they obviously had like the gladiator fights there um it was free admission if you were like roman but other people like traveling in had to and other like religions had to pay to get in um there was one thing that i thought was crazy Oh, so there was 80 entrances and 76 of them were for the general public. Um, and then there was one that was called the Gate of Life. And then there was one that was called the Gate of Death. And it was basically like the ones who died went through the one gate, the gladiators. And then the ones that lived went through the other gate. They were on like Eastern and Western like parts of the um, Coliseum. Wild. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then the other fact that I found was that the movie Gladiator was like offered, they gave them permission to actually film the movie there, but the director was like, oh, it's not, I don't think it's like good enough for the movie to film it at the actual Coliseum. So they filmed it somewhere else. He didn't like the, he didn't like it there, I guess. I, I get what he's saying because have you, if you've been to the Coliseum, it's, it would be hard to set up a movie set there and you probably couldn't get the shots you wanted because they've excavated most of the bottom, like of where all the uh, trap doors and stuff yeah. were. Yeah, it makes sense. It's yeah. just funny that they had the permission. I'm kind of surprised they got permission to film it yeah. there. Also, they they don't want it to look old. They want it to look right. like it was. Like sick, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. people forget only about 50,000, kind of a small, kind of kind of mid. No, mm -hmm. dude, that's had to be so <laughs> big. How big is the Boston Garden? I meant the TD Garden. Like 20, but that's an indoor. And you got to understand, they yeah. were definitely packing the place. I mean, how many stadiums do we have in this country that are bigger than 50,000? We have 100. 40, like 30, 40. Oh, there's 100? Okay. Oh, wait, I mean. No, I'm with you. I'm, all was... big-time college football teams are way bigger than 50. All that's the NFL. True. Yep. What's that, the smallest NFL stadium? 
the Bills. Mm-hmm. I don't know how big it is, but it's bigger mm-hmm. than fifty. Okay. The, but yeah, Coliseum, Coliseum couldn't compete in this era. But the Coliseum could do uh, naval battles. Yeah, that's yes. yeah. They used that to is flood sick. it. Yeah. We can't do that. I would love to watch that. If you go to like a football stadium, they have a mock naval battle in there. <laughs> uh, should do that. Dude, that'd be so cool. Well, what mm-hmm. if uh, Coliseum was also sick because that was like the birthplace of all like sports, basically, and spectator sports. If Soldier yeah. Field. Um, Soldier Field is the smallest stadium. It holds 61,000. That's okay. right. That one is small because the whole one side doesn't have like an upper deck. Really? Oh, because it's glass. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I played there. I remember thinking it was, I felt like it was bigger than that. Damn. Would you have any moral qualms against like watching a man <laughs> fight a lion? I feel like I'm Billy just, wouldn't. No, I'm just going to be not. honest. I, it felt like. Going, I would love. I, I've said this multiple times. I would love to take a time machine just to go be part of the crowd there and watch. Mostly because I wanted to see. They definitely did some great animal matchups. Like you know how we debate who would win a gorilla or a bear. They definitely had yeah. a gorilla fight a bear. Actually, I don't know how you transport a gorilla. Bear versus tiger. I'm sure they had. Yeah, bear versus tiger. Like all the like matchups you'd want to see. They were definitely doing them. Like we just yes. talk about them. They were about it. They're like, let's go, let's go get a tiger from one end of the empire and a bear from the other end of the empire. Let's make them fight. Like mm-hmm. that. That's sick. Yeah, I, would I don't rather. have any moral qualms about that. We should do that now. Honestly, that's <laughs> yeah. fire. Yeah, I only have moral qualms about like how they used to gather around and watch someone be burnt at the stake. That was one of the events. Um, Well, that's just what they used to do. Well, no, no, but even in Europe too, like public executions were like one of the biggest spectator events. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to just show up and watch someone get killed. I'd rather show up and watch people fight. And and then, yeah, probably someone gets killed. At least then there's, (laughs) at least then someone can put up a fight. Huh. Yeah, like I'm I not... would like to see a gorilla and a bear go at it. Like yeah. I think we should do that just for <laughs> scientific purposes. I think the bear will whoop his ass, but just to put the debate to to rest, you know what I'm saying? I don't even think it'll be close to be honest. I don't think it'd be close. I think it depends on how the like if the gorilla gets weapons, I think it's a whole different thing. But can a gorilla use weapons? I say a gorilla with a sword or a spear wins every time. Yeah. I mean, this isn't Disney. Does the gorilla know how to use a sword? Well, they can kill monkeys with spears. Chimpanzees can. But I think a better matchup would be polar bear, Siberian tiger. That would be... That would be insane. I think a polar bear would win. Yeah, I mean, the polar bear... I think the polar bear is bigger, but the Siberian tiger is still, like, one of the... It's, like, the largest... Wait, let me look this up. Damn. Wait, polar bear versus Siberian tiger. That's the one thing. Probably there's a lot of propaganda um, out there with animals. The one thing that we kind of fell for is that uh, lions can fight with tigers. They can't. Tigers be oh tigers be getting in that yeah. ass. But uh, apparently we're so wrong. Polar bears easily beat tigers. It's it's like not it's not even comparable. Polar bear, uh, so can get to nine feet tall on their hind legs. Siberian tigers can only get to six six. Tigers are faster, but bears have a bigger bite force, more teeth, claws are same size. Um, but weight statistics, they're like fifteen hundred pounds. Siberian tigers only get to seven hundred. So that's like a polar bear is double the size of Siberian tiger. I think we just really doubt how big polar bears are. How about a polar bear and a hippo? That's that. That's another great. That's a great matchup. That is a great. That's that's what I wish I, they would do. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'll take a hippo over any mammal on this planet, except for like you know blue whales, shit like that. I ain't talk about them. <laughs> a blue whale versus a hippo, polar bear <laughs> yeah, versus a hippo. Swallow that nigga. A hippo would hippo. win a fight against yeah. a polar bear. That's what they're saying on A to Z animals. There's a <laughs> can hippos can hippos like 700. move though? Yeah. Like I I know they can move, but are they quick? Like are yes. they fast? Yeah, they're fast. Yes. Really? They're like sneaky well, they, they, fast. What? They really have no flaws, man. They're they they're big. They're aggressive. Oh, they're territorial. Shit. They have fat on them to protect yeah. them from 
cuts. So, I just know Fiona, the hippo. Okay. They can get her. Cincinnati They can Zoo. get up to 10,000 pounds. And the, their skin 10, is... 10,000? Yeah, and their skin is so thick. They have like almost zero impenetrable parts of their body. The Ooh. only places that... So even scavengers, when the hippo's dead for a while, the only place they can get to before the skin starts to split uh, from rotting and bloat is like they have to go through the back. Uh, that's the only way they can get to the innards. Okay. Yeah, through the uh, well, other end of the digestive system. I'm I mean, looking at a baby right now. It's so cute. I don't think I've ever seen it a says baby here, hippo. The Coliseum would have hippos. Really? Yeah. They would sometimes have a hippo fight a rhino. Oh, my that, God. Wow. That would be I still unreal. got the hippo. I think I still got the hippo. Yeah, I think I still got the hippo, hippo too. Hippo versus rhino. But I don't know. If the rhino gets a, a good shot with the horn. Ah. <sighs> The thing is, I don't know if the yeah. rhino horde could pierce, whereas like a hippo could like crunch your face. Oh wait, there's I'm looking at a video right now. Hippo learns lessons from rhino. Let's I'm I'm gonna send to the group. I'm narrating it. Rhino hippo opens his mouth. Rhino backs it down. <laughs> oh, rhino sticks horn into hippo's mouth. Oh, that's actually. That's something we didn't take into account because the hippo just opens its mouth real big and the rhino just stuck the horn. Actually, I'm uh, oh, this is OK. Then the hippo ran away. Cause, yeah, the rhino just wow. would hit the hippo in it's the middle of its mouth and the hippo's like, screw this. Hmm. Oh, the hippo just took a bite out of the rhino's butt and the <laughs> rhino turned around and once again. Got the hippo in the mouth with its horn. I think they're the, we're not taking into account the fighting style of the hippo, which is literally Aggressive. just open mouth and try to chomp, like hungry, hungry hippo style. Yeah, if it tries to chomp on the horn, it's fucked. Hippo's closest relatives are pigs. Really? Yeah, yeah probably take good as hell. Didn't know that. Hippo meat's actually popular uh, in Did, Africa. Didn't really know that either. Yeah. There's a, I saw a deep web video of like, there was a, a, like a gorilla, like a, like a militant group, uh, in, uh, like, like a, a Coney 2012 group with RPGs and they RPG to hippo. I mean, that wouldn't preserve a lot of the meat. I know, but I think they're just doing it for shits and gigs. Yeah. I mean, in Cambodia, you can pay to RPG a cow. Yeah. Which is super fucked so up. So I think if you're, you know, if the merchant of death drops off a bunch of RPGs at your door, you're going to, you know, pop them off to test them out. Why not on the hippos who are running up on your camp? I would try a hippo. Hippo meat's probably Seems hippo like meat. It, you say it's the pig's cousin. It's probably, it's probably all right. Oh, I'm did, apparently bacon. whale meat is, is gross. I wrote a blog. We almost used the uh, the the swamps of the South as a hippo ranch. We almost yeah. This was like Teddy Roosevelt was totally in on it. I, I told let me look up this blog. I wrote a long time ago. The USA was going to they had to feed all the new immigrants coming in from the uh, in the Northeast, and they needed a new food source because they didn't think cattle uh, were going to be able to do it. And they're like, what? How can we develop? these swamplands in the south in order to feed people because you can't have any livestock there and they're like let's get hippos and the only reason it didn't happen was because of the meat processing plants in kansas city because it was harder to transport hippos and those like unions and low-key mafia in kansas city and from all the meat packing district like chicago all like those big meat cities um were like no you can't put a, a processing plant down south to process the hippo meat that was their bit. They like were about to just start shipping them in. They were in front of Congress. Like there was a bill signed, and they're like basically they l like lobbied uh, Congress to not allow another uh, meat uh, packaging plant down south because they said that it was too hot and would cause disease, which is probably true. But like we were that close to having hippo <laughs> ranches. If if the hippos got out, which they would eventually, we'd be kind of fucked. I mean, it's happening in Columbia yeah, right now. Yep. Teddy Roosevelt almost put hippos in the bayou. It was a blog I wrote like two years ago and it only got eight comments. No one really cared. <laughs> I, it, like, it's just so fascinating, but like only eight people comment. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get enough views. 
but you should go look at it. <coughs> well, I thought that was a great, interesting topic, yeah. Billy. Thank you. Can I shout out uh, one last wonder? Yeah. Uh, Tenochtitlan. Oh, yeah. The capital of the Aztecs. I just love it because it's the only city I know of that was kind of just built on an island in the middle of a lake. And then it had three bridges that connected the city to the banks of the lake. And when the Spanish conquistadors found it, like it was larger than most cities in Europe. Like it was larger than London and Paris at that time. So they must've been like, Jesus Christ. Cause at first when they arrived in the Caribbean, they were just like, all right, it's all these pretty primitive people. And then they keep on exploring and eventually find a city bigger than all of the cities back in Spain. Like that has to be insane. City of gold. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah, it was all destroyed and then they filled in the lake and that's where Mexico City is now today. Yeah. Um, there was fire. a outside at the Aztec temples, I think around there in Mexico, a woman recently ran up the steps, which you weren't, aren't allowed to do anymore and went to the top and took an Instagram. And then everyone around her just started booing the hell out of her. Let me find the video. And like when she got down, everyone just beat the shit out of her. There was a tourist yeah. who who climbed up the pyramids too, and like posted it on YouTube. People were furious. Right. You can get arrested for that shit, can't you? Like and thrown in jail for like a long time. Yeah, he just like ran up to the top. I wonder if he did get put in jail. Um, have you guys ever seen videos of the? ball game they used to play like the aztecs and the mayans used to play with the head oh yeah with the heads uh not no this was with like a rubber ball but i i think the losing they team cut head sometimes them? killed yeah at the oh, end but it, I thought it, was. it looks like the hardest game to play ever like you have you have to get it through a hoop but instead of a <laughs> basketball hoop which is flat this was like a basketball hoop on its side and you can't use your hands or feet so you're trying to hit it through the small hole, I guess, just using your knees or hips mm -hmm. or maybe your elbows. Uh, but I would love to see people play that in like modern day. Whoa. Looks fucking hard. I haven't seen that video. Send me that video. Um, oh. Yeah, because I, I, I think they did like a modern modern uh, reenactment of the game. I'll, I'll send it to you. when like they was trying to get buckets yeah you are trying to get a bucket but it just feels so unnatural not being able to use your feet or hands you got to be wildly coordinated yeah i think sometimes the loser of that game would be sacrificed that would suck yo that's wild that's wild bro yeah you know, we've came a long way man still do some silly shit but we have came a long you got to put something on the line yeah. Yeah. I mean, when there's no league or whatever, <laughs> play for keeps. Got to play for keeps, baby. I bet. I bet some folks got real good at that game. I mean, boom or bust. <laughs> Got to get it in. I All right, man. Um, yeah. if, does anybody got any got anything else, man? Uh, we got voicemails if you want to do them. Wait, we gotta we gotta choose the new modern wonders. Oh, of the world. right, 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 uh, right. True, 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 PFT, right, right. yeah, PFT has as well. The... Yeah, PFT quickly yeah. put in the group chat the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid is his new modern wonder of the world. All right, Billy, do you have one? Mine's Vegas. I think Vegas. Just as a city. It's a connection of multiple casinos that has underground. Uh, places and stuff but the only reason i'm saying it's a wonder of the world is that let's say every important city and let's say there's a huge nuclear attack at vegas is very unlikely to be bombed because of that it has so many and this is going to sound stupid but what it has so many cultural architectural artistic and uh imp like parts of it from so many different cultures that I think is a perfect ex encapsulation of like preserving like history. It, it has like, uh, you know, Roman influence, uh, like 
the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, but like think about it. It's such a microcosm of so many cultures from across the world. But it's caricatures of all those things. Right, but if like the thing is people thought the same thing about Renaissance paintings. They're like, oh, it's just copies of the OG classicals. Like this is like cheap compared to that. Like because it, but it's, it's like fast. Like think about it. Like but now they, that's all we have. Yeah, like when Florence was making all this new art, they were like, oh, this is just rip-offs of the like the greek stuff and the roman stuff from 1400 years ago like you but like if you think about it we're closer to the renaissance than the renaissance was to the greeks and romans so like that art like that artwork like because if you go to, into caesar's palace or like into like all these different like they have implements of the architecture like there's there's every example the venetian of, yeah like there's different types of columns like there's doric ionic like it's a in not only just Western architecture, or there's like all sorts of, uh, I forget the exact ones, but uh, like all these different casinos have all these different pieces of architecture. I like and it. Like <laughs> Paris, there's like Paris, Paris. But why, why would it be a world world wonder though? Because it's all connected, and it's got you know the mini Empire State, mini. Uh, they actually do have a mini Empire State Building, and they have a Eiffel Tower. I don't know. It sounds stupid, but like literally, if everything else gets destroyed, it'll be the only artifact that like remains. <laughs> they're they're currently <laughs> making they're currently so making that huge th- ball, right? Yeah. So your theory is, if everything gets destroyed, Vegas, except for Vegas, Vegas would be the world wonder. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it just has everything. It will have the only things. Yeah. If they want <laughs> I love it, man. That's what it is. Uh, Big T, what you got, bro? The Yard House in Times Square. Much like the Taj Mahal, <laughs> it is a glimmering, shiny... Uh, what What's the word I'm looking for? An oasis in a desert, if you will. <laughs> ah, like Vegas. Amongst, amongst uh, a place you really don't want to find yourself, there's one beam of hope. What about the Margaritaville the there? House. I've never been to a Margaritaville, so I can't attest, but it is right across the street. So we'll just say that block. Okay. I believe it's 40th and 7th. Yeah. <laughs> Ratch. Arian, what's like yours? Uh, mine is ayahuasca and like DMT in general, just the, 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 the chemical composition. I think that should be a world wonder. It should be studied more than it already is. I think it is uh, a gateway. Well, I'm going entering the philosophy zone. I think it's a gateway to our uh, connectivity to the oneness of the universe. And uh, yeah, I just think it's, I just think it's something that it's naturally growing that needs to be uh, more looked at and preserved. Have you done it? No, I have not done it. I haven't been in the right, what I would say physical state. I want to be in like top physical shape in order to do it. Like not all built and cut. I just want to, because like a lot of times when I take any kind of substances that get me absent or you know any kind of psychoactive substances, I have an analytical mind, and so if something feels off, it'll like be a cycle of like something's wrong. You know what I'm saying? So like I I'm I'm not in the right state to do it, do it, but I'm going to for sure. I like that. Mackenzie, do you want? Um, I, well, like I did mine like completely as a joke. Like it wasn't actually like, <laughs> um, you really did Vegas, man. Yeah, I know. I, I was like trying to square think yard of, house. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I was like trying to think of, does anyone watch the show Vanderpump Rules? Yes. So there's like all this drama going on with it, but there's this like one like thing that keeps coming up. So this is why it remind me of there's like this alleyway that's behind the restaurant that all the waiters and waitresses would like go back there and all the drama would like happen mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And so I was going to say like the back alleyway behind the restaurant, sir, because it's like just very iconic. <laughs> I, I recently figured out what that show was about. They're waiters. No. Yeah. But it was a it's about a restaurant that was owned by another reality star. Yeah, right? Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. Which is like 2 degrees of separation from reality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, it's a <laughs> it's reality a show, show about a reality star that has a, a restaurant. Re- yeah. 
It's a reality show but about the, a reality show. But the show isn't really about the reality star. She's not no, really yeah, the main No, yeah, she's character. not the main, main like, person. In it's it. about the waiters that she's hired. I know, but it would be like... She's a minor character. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is that is nuts. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is funny. The, um, the Andy right, Cohen Maddie, pipeline. What you got, Maddie? Um, I mean, much to no one's surprise, I've chosen um, just the string of Ohio rest stops along Route I-80. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I don't know what else I could possibly say that would encapsulate that better. Um, yeah, probably those. But like, Love it. But like how the Great Wall of China is like a whole like sweeping, you know, miles long thing just how that like how that is like not one rest stop but just like the whole um setup love it yeah love it uh danny did you did you do did you go already my trip um no i didn't go just thinking off the top of my head i'd probably say the line in saudi arabia if they ever build it yeah that was that like nine mile building that we talked about that's just going to be one long line they are building it right yeah they they made the foundations who knows if if they'll complete it but i mean that will be insane if it gets built that's crazy the the upkeep alone Yeesh. i have another the ac costs what's the opposite of a wonder like a horror um yeah mm-hmm. horrors of the modern world or travesties yeah well would that be the opposite of wonder though would it, would i don't it, know because wonder is like a mystery so wouldn't it be something very well like, known like or Vegas. The... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is a horror? It's that freaking thing in Hudson Yards that everyone oh, kept jumping oh, off vessel? of. The oh, vessel. the vessel. Yeah. That vessel. actually, Billy, you're kind of, yeah. That's yeah, right. that one's, yeah. Like, what the fuck? No, they no, literally no. had to close it because. I was going to say, you can't go up it anymore, right? Yeah, people who used to go up it, like. Jump. Totally fine. Just jump. Just randomly. Yeah. Fathers with who, pushing strollers. Just say, fuck it and jump. Like. Oh. Father pushing a, a stroller would, jump. Are you sure? Really? really? Yeah, Wait. So now you be, think it's like possessed? I don't know. I don't know. From but from the sounds of it, what I've heard, like just people go up there, they're totally fine, and then. Hmm. Yeah, being the architect of that must suck. Yeah. Right. You're like I got I such a knew. sweet commission to build this in New York. It's going to be great. Everyone's going to be admiring my work, and people just <laughs> use it to kill themselves. She just put, that is tough. Yeah, put a trampoline at the bottom. Hon- honestly, it. in um, I and went that- to school in Ithaca and Cornell. There was like such yeah. a high suicide rate because, like, I guess the students were like so stressed they had to put nets under bridges, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um, to like catch people because they were like jumping off so yeah. often. Jeez. Same with the iPhone factories in China. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really. I think so. Jeez. Jeez. Well. Uh, tough. I have some voice. Right. I have some voicemails. <laughs> if we want to do those to end on a little bit of a lighter note. Yeah, let's do that. Also, so. all of the voicemails today are like Big T's fan club came to play today. Oh, love awesome. yeah. that! Shout cool. out. <laughs> all of them were like <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Okay. Yet T. That's when I'm gonna start calling him. Hey, this is Lee from Texas. Um, hope you're all doing great, all looking handsome, Maddie, gorgeous. Um, my question is for Big T. Um, I want to know how the fuck you didn't make it to the NFL, or not even the NFL. You didn't even make like play college football with your frame. Like, if I was a scout and I saw you just like walking down the street, I'd be like. Like the blind side. Like, okay, wait. You can, you can turn it off. Dog, you can this turn it off. A fan. This, this is, is not a fan insult. club. That, this yeah, is yeah. just a guy asking why I sucked at football. No, wait. It, the, yeah. I thought it was like, but you look like you could be good. At no, that's, no, no, that's that's the what, worst. That's worse. That's oh, what people who also weren't good at football say, but they're like, oh, if I was your size, I would have been so good. No, that uh, no. Oh, that, sorry. That was that I didn't, was bad. Is that like is that like asking a tall person like oh why do didn't you play she, basketball? Yes. Okay, sorry, I didn't read it like that. I didn't mean it. <laughs> a fair critique though. Hey, you see a motherfucker hey walking around how did you not become a six, professional eight. football player? Yeah, hey, but I'm saying, but like you see a motherfucker walking around at six eight at the airport, you like hey, come on, fam, you should you should have hooped though. Like that was that's a layup. That's a no little... point intended. You... Yeah, one of my best guy friends from college is six seven. And does not have much of an athletic bone in his body. 
six like seven. Move, yeah, because there's a, there's super athletic six seven people. He's like six seven one eighty. <laughs> like yeah, there's like just a string bean. Yeah, but if you're like I think over six nine six ten, that's when it's like you're you have tall to enough. Learn. Yeah, you're tall enough where your athleticism can easily be made up for it with height. Mm-hmm. Uh, to answer the question, how did I not become a professional football player? I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, that's how. That's <laughs> did you play in high school? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't very good. Yeah, but some people don't want to play in college because it, it takes up your whole life. So if you know you're like... Oh, I'm... it was not... It, that, that, that choice was made for me. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> it's hard. That's the answer. Your return style. But I think it would be rough to be like, okay, I'm good enough to play in college, but I'm definitely not good enough to go pro. So do you want to dedicate your entire college experience to playing ball when you know there's no chance you're going to go pro at the end? Billy? Yeah, that's called D3 football. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but like, there's a lot of like D one kids that don't go pro yeah i mean scholarships then yeah then you just say okay i'm taking advantage of the academic part of this yeah and like there's a bunch of dudes i went to college with like that i mean one of, one of the homies actually adam myers white shout out to the homie he uh he's a linebacker he's like a four or five star and knew pretty early he was like oh, i don't really want to do ball and he's a actually a medical doctor now he's a doctor so he used his shit to get his master's and i think he might have his phd i don't know but he's definitely a doctor now md so nice Okay, well, sorry, Big T. I didn't mean it as an insult. I, I, That's fine. Okay, hold on. There's other ones. Yeah, she set him up, though. Buttered him up nice and yeah, good. Yeah, what the hell? No, all of them shit. mentioned you today. And then no. there was more that I didn't put in. All of them today were like, oh, like, Big T this, Big T that. And then I was like, what's going on? Yeah, apparently they were all just talking shit. And she was like, oh. <laughs> no, Mad Dog doesn't understand that quite. Like, I can see how she thought that was a compliment. Yeah, like, you I, in my brain, I was like, oh, Big T has, like, an athletic football player build. I don't know. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it with harm. Anyway. All right. Next, next one. Next one. What's up, Macro Dosing Podcast? I'm Gabe from Little Rock, Arkansas. First off, I'd like to defend PFT on the bath conundrum that happened on last week's episode. Um, even though showers are required due to time constraints, baths indeed are superior. The health benefits from a cold or hot bath alone outweigh showers tremendously. I stand with you, King. Second. I'm curious to know if each one of you have a toxic trait that you can think of. Anything. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you you good? <laughs> I didn't. What what? Did, I, I couldn't. It was kind he of. He asked like if uh if you have a toxic trait that you can identify in yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have one. Yeah, I'll go first. I um. I'm extremely judgmental, and for the most part, like I'm, I'm lackadaisical on this podcast. So like when I'm bantering with y'all, the shit it comes out. You know what I'm saying? Like I just shoot. You know what I'm saying? But that's when I love you. When I'm comfortable enough to do that, it means I love you. But there are times when I meet strangers, I don't have the capacity to give a fuck, and so like I just say what I feel. Like, and it's it's extremely toxic. And I've, I've in my latter years, I've gotten way better. But early on, I was very combative. I, I just didn't care. Like, I, I, would, I would tell you how I felt, and I would judge the shit out of you, and it was bad. Hmm. The end. I feel like, though, like, so many people are judgmental. Yeah, but I let you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I feel like yeah, you do, right. but, like, you do, yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm a kind human. Like, I, I've, I've, I've done a lot of self Yeah, you're nice, to, like, though. Yeah, I'm really nice. I like I really am. But there was a time in my life where the world wasn't so kind to me and I let it be known. Like I would like I'm really good at talking shit. Like I'm I'm good I'm good off the hip. I'm witty. And so that is a absolute weapon either way. You know what I'm saying? Like I could I could use it to diffuse a situation or ignite a situation. And a lot of times when I was growing up, I would ignite a situation all the time because I could say shit that could just cut like you like Damn, bro! Like, why would you say that? I'm like, like you know how to find like people's buttons to push? Yeah, I put yeah, exactly. I push buttons so fast, and I know how. I know what gets under people's skin. I'm, I'm really good at compartmentalizing personalities, and so I was really good at like just talking shit. Like, I could, I could, I could, I could figure out what you uncomfortable with and make you hurt. It was not like I said; it's toxic. I understand, but I'm I'm way better now. I'm a kind human now. Hmm. Anyone? I think. Um... I I asked my girlfriend and she said you think you're right all the time but you usually are. 
I think <laughs> God that that that's just a double entendre of your toxic. I, I I think I I do know that's what she said. I do know some if I if there's an argument whether with her or with somebody else, and I know like like it both people have come to the realization that I am right. I will milk it and like act very upset and like prolong the the win you take a victory lap yes yeah <laughs> and like even if it's something that doesn't really bother me i'll pretend that it really did and be like yeah that that like really upset me whatever uh that's something i do sometimes i guess that's relatively toxic yeah bill i got a lot of toxic traits <laughs> i mean people have seen them <laughs> Do you want to name one? Uh, but like you, you not fact checking a source isn't toxic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, would like, I would like to know what your know. real toxic yeah. traits are. Like, yeah, what, like what, your day to day. I'm a, I, I get stubborn, of course. I will yeah. just like go, like I, I'll just keep on butting heads with people, just because I, I don't know, come up like I don't know why, dude. I, do I just probably believe I'm right, and maybe. And this is, I don't always believe that I am right, even if I am. Some people just think they're always right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, also I'm self-destructive in ways. That's probably, mm. I'm magic. coming down from magic, uh, <laughs> mad, honey. magic mad honey right now. And, magic uh, honey. That's the way better name. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I actually, speaking of, I'm, I think I've, I, I had a little bit of a giggle fit. Yeah, I know. Now I'm back. Um, I got really spacey for a good five minutes. I like didn't even. I couldn't even like. I think you were put, very paranoid at first. Yeah, I was. I wish I got yeah. into it a little better. I would have had a little more fun. Yes, that well, was actually the perfect amount. For yeah. those at home, you're gonna try to get mad honey because you heard about it on this. Literally take a quarter of a spoonful, like just don't a little tip. Take advice on what drugs to take from this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yes. don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but you should take advice on what merch to buy. Yes, and you should go to store.barstoolsports.com. <laughs> it's like it's like mad honey and forgot about the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be sure to shop all our new merch now on the Barstool store. Uh we got macrodosing UFO crystal wash tees. Those are one of my favorite. We got the macrodosing frog hoodie, simulation tee rig tea i've been wearing some spaces fake stuff definitely check it all out at store.barstoolsports.com i wore the black macro dosing tea a lot i saw it's uh, sick a lot in nepal so that'll be a nice plug in the videos thank you <laughs> um, yep, yep. donnie do you have a toxic trait uh, toxic trait. oh i was gonna say i still suffer from fomo which i feel like at age 35 i shouldn't still be dealing with um and that I feel like that's a toxic thing to still care about at my age. Um, I was I was also gonna say, uh, Arian, your toxic trait would probably make you a very good freestyle battler or like a battle rapper. Have you ever considered getting into that? Could be. Oh, yeah, I used to do all the time. We we used to have um, ciphers at, at lunch. I was nice because it was that's what you do. You cut. You talk about their jeans. Talk about their girls. Talk about all that. Yeah. Shit. So that's kind of using your toxic trait for good, or not, I don't know if for good, but that's uh, a positive cool. outlet. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Well, I think I think actually uh, writing in general does that because it allows you to kind of put your thoughts on paper, and I'll be it judgmental or not, it allows you to see and and uh, kind of gauge how you view the world. Mm hmm. Yeah. Actually, probably I'm hyper competitive too. Yeah. To a fault. Yeah. Where it's kind of like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, shit. Sorry. Do you get really, really competitive at your basketball games? Yes. Big T. <laughs> Pal. <laughs> I mean, we, we told the story on the show of him like throwing a guy to the ground. Okay. Oh, right. That was, he was hooking me. So if you don't want to get thrown to the ground, don't hold on to the thing that's throwing you to the yeah, ground. Yes, Billy is the most competitive person in that league by a substantial no, margin. No, the, everyone gets competitive. I just won't <laughs> let you get a rebound because I know I can out-rebound almost everybody. 
Yes. So yes, <laughs> almost everybody. No, dude, I I got it down to a science. It's just one of those oh, things cool. where I, like I I wasn't you know I couldn't jump the highest. I could like I don't know like parts of my game you know I was an effort guy. So, but I knew I could fucking set a good box out and get a rebound. So then I just like try to get every rebound. Love it. Okay. Little Dennis Rodman. Yeah. <laughs> Billy, we got another. I'm one? actually going to play after this, and thank God the Mad Honey didn't fuck me up because my boys would have been pissed. <laughs> I have a group my chat boys. with random dudes who I meet playing pickup, and they text me to come play because of my rebounding skills. Not to brag. Hmm. I'm happy for you, man. <laughs> um, my toxic trait is that I am a really, really chronic dilly dallier. Oh, like really, really bad. Is that like a procrastinator? But that's not yes. toxic. It it is for me and the people around me. Um, like I I in college and high school I was a huge procrastinator, and now that I don't have like homework, it has. Well, I've always been a dilly dallier, but like, like it's translated just like my personal life in terms like, for example, like in high school I would have gymnastics practice from like six to nine thirty, and then I would come home at like ten p.m. and I would. Like I would go to shower, but I would just end up like sitting on the bathroom floor for like 45 minutes before I would get in the shower and just like sit there, and just take a beat. I think that's self-care, man. Dudes do that a lot. <laughs> is that <laughs> is that a thing? Uh, I don't know if we sit on the bathroom floor. But... Yeah, like I would just sit there on my towel and just... And, and I just could not bring myself to get in the shower or like if I like e even now, like in my professional life, I have to work up so early in the morning because if I can't do I have to give myself a two hours in the morning just to just to show up here. Yeah. Not like I'm getting ready, but I'll 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 come I home for that. my workout. I'll sit for 35 minutes mm -hmm. and then I'll shower. I, and then I sit for 20 minutes. That's meant just say it's yeah. meditation. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I mean, low key it is. I, I do that in the shower, so I won't do it outside of the shower. In the shower, I will literally just sit in the shower and let the water run on me and not do shit for about 30 minutes. See, just I have a gross, like, like, like my New York City the, apartment the water doesn't. Water and just kind of like, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Like, <laughs> 30 minutes. Too. Water's kind of scarce back. in Texas. Don't, don't you have one of those musical that. showers? Uh, not my problem. Don't, don't you have two stops? Yeah, Aaron, your richer shower is probably way better than mine. Mine's about the size of my chair. I should give you a, I should give you a video tour of my shower. My shower is fucking fire. Not even gonna lie. If, if <laughs> Stutton was almost that shit is fire. I got two of the sprouts, and then I have two things where you can like turn it on and then it becomes like a little jet oh, thing. Nice. And every now and then you can just you know. Do you have a sauna? Uh, no, okay. no. Do you have a cold plunge? I have a hot tub. Okay. It, yeah. It's crazy how popular cold plunges have become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate that shit. I want to do one. I want to see what it, it would do for me. Straight. Oh, cold plunges are amazing. Yeah. What do they do for I you? Mean, it what are the benefits? It, anti inflammatory. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. Like, it's nerve. It like helps your brain so much. Um, Is that the same as, like, would a cold shower give me the same results or no? Yeah. Uh, anabolically. Nah. Or is it because I'm plunging? It raises your tea. Benefits? I don't want to raise my tea, Billy. Well, you. <laughs> He's I mean, obsessed with his tea, bro. No, I, I mean, nine hundred. Um, <laughs> triple the amount no of Will deal. Compton's. Uh, we found that out. No. Uh, Hippa. But, Hippa. Maybe it will raise her. Yeah, e. Pippa. Billy no, Hippa. I didn't violate Hippa. We. I. I got it checked by a lawyer. No, it's. <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's good for your metabolism. It, like, it's insane how good it is for you. Yeah, some people are like, I was really anxious and depressed, and then I started cold plunging. Now, yeah. like, I feel perfectly fine. Yeah. They act like it's a, a cure all. They're, huh. Like, I think a lot of people realize they get to the point in their life where they're like, oh shit, I have to do shit to make sure my mental health's okay. Self care. Yeah, yeah. like I kind of hit that. I kind of hit that realization in college, and wasn't taking care of that sort of stuff, and came out of college being like, I need to you know work out, Same. do this, or I'm. Yeah. either gonna be totally spaced out or just oh. feel shitty i mean if i don't work out like i work out every morning before work if i don't work out before work i can feel a, a men mental difference in the way i perform at work yeah 
if I don't work out versus when I do work out. If I, yeah, on Mondays after we record part of my take way late, if I don't get up, like run, do a bunch of shit, like get a, like basically a two hour workout in, yeah. I won't be able to operate the rest of the week. I'll be yeah. like, until I get that two hours of just like getting my shit ready. Which is never how I was like in college or whatever. But I think now yeah. just being, having a job, I'm like, I need to jump start my days. Yeah. Cause especially here, you don't have to be here at a certain time. So it, like there's there's not like a deadline being like I have to be at work at nine a.m. So it's like I need I need a time to tell me to get up so I get up and go do something. So it's like if I book a workout class at for seven a.m. I gotta go at seven a.m. Yeah. And then they kind of schedule that with the rest of my day. Big Cat said that squatting is like a drug. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's the most anabolic movement. Did he say that recently? Yeah. He just On started working out can. again. Cause cause okay. like I will work out sometimes, but. I've never squatted. And then right before I was I was gonna be doing the trek up to base camp, I was yeah. like, shit, I'm gonna be using my legs. I should try to squat. I'm fucking horrible at it, but it did feel good to squat a few times. I squatted this morning, um, and the only reason I tried the wild honey is that I knew that I'm in the right headspace to try the honey because like Okay. Like that's like like when I love you like microdosing is squat days. Okay, I'm gonna have to start squatting more, <laughs> or boxing. I don't have a squat rack though. Can I use this one? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. I'm gonna start coming in early and hitting some squats in here. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. <laughs> but if you like really get into squatting, like I remember in college, I was really into squatting. Like when we were like putting up crazy numbers in the off season, like I was I put 475 pounds on my back, and after completing that squat, it was like the most insane rush ever. When I did a squat, I realized that there are muscles in my legs I haven't used in years. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got my yeah. dad into kettlebell squats because he's a little older, and he says that he feels 20 years younger. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because hmm. it gets all your muscles going. It's anabolic. It makes your hormones kick into gear, your metabolism. I'm going to try squat to- Squat science. I think I'm going to try to start- I'm on this whole health kick now, aka I said I want to do 75 soft, but I think- for, I think I want to start lifting. I, th I think a new apartment I might be getting so soon would have a gym in it. And then I could like lift because I don't have anywhere to lift right now. Yeah. A lot of girls yeah, don't gym, lift because they're like, I'm going to get big. No, but like, it. No, the anabolic like for your brain is sick. What? Why did you just randomly take a shot at all females? I bro? didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but like, no, it's but a classic misconception. Like whenever A lot I'm of like, girls <laughs> do say like, I don't want to get beefy if I lift. Like, no, you should lift. Yeah. It actually burns more fat than all the crazy amounts of cardio that some girls... I, I'm just I'm generalizing. Like, your spin class might not burn as much fat as doing in an hour of lifting weights. See, but I like my spin class more just in terms of enjoyment. It depends on what kind yeah. of weights, though, too. It just depends on what kind of, like, what you're doing. Like, like, it, it also depends on what they're trying to do. Are they trying to gain... Are they trying to get thick? Are they trying to lose weight in general? And all that shit depends. Yeah. That's like, yeah. Also, why a lot of people don't work out is because uh, it's just too much shit. Everybody has different opinions and everybody has different. And so it's overwhelming. The information could be overwhelming. It and is. That, you, you just be like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not doing it. Because it's like, am I doing this right? Am I not doing it right? I would just say as a baseline, if you don't know what you're doing, Find out what burns and just do 30 minutes of burn. You know what I mean? If it's a bench press, if it's a squat, if it's a sub, if it's abs, find out something that burns. Just if it burns, generally a good thing. Yeah, it just feels overwhelming to start. Like, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the heart. Especially, yeah. and like lifting, like boys are so scary at the gym. And like, then they're looking at you. I think that could be your toxic trait too. You think a lot of boys are trying to kill you. Yeah, yeah. I feel like actually, I feel like every time I talk that's about, a good one. yeah. Well, actually, I probably think that's probably saved my life. But yeah, that's a good one. That's a okay. that's a. That's yeah. a I feel like that's every so time Donnie's on here, I talk about how I I think I'm gonna die. No, Matt, no. I mean, yeah. I think that's no. I think that's something I take for for granted. Like the toxic I trait is that men are be, killing women. That's the toxic trait. Yeah, being a. <laughs> Yeah, like if, yeah. if a girl starts like following me on the way home, I'm not like, oh shit, she's about to kill me. 
Odds are she's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm paran I'm pretty paranoid too. I get it. Like, yeah. No, I'm I uh, I think everyone's gonna kill me. There was an Uber Eats driver behind me the other day, and he was just trying to get past me, but he was running, and I thought I I had to grip onto scaffolding because I thought he was gonna come get me. Shit. I don't <laughs> hate that. I don't hate that. Well, uh, I think that does it for voicemails, huh? Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Glad right. to be back right. from my from, <laughs> from the Himalayas. Trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for yeah. having me on. Thanks welcome for coming. Back. Always, always. Wonton Don is always welcome, dogs. Um, yeah, so PFT will be back next episode. Mm -hmm. Uh continue to like, comment, subscribe. All that shit helps. Uh the pod grow. Bigger gets more dope shit we can do. Are we redoing the science fair? I meant to ask y'all that. Are we We are coming up. Yeah. Actually, I What's guess the we date can say for that. Uh, we don't have an exact date yet, but this summer we're doing another science fair. Um, Love to see it. Love to see it. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for that shit. Yeah. Because that one did well. I and it. Billy's gonna, already nailed down what experiment he's going to do. I'm going to do an, put water in a condom. <laughs> I have a couple. I have a couple. I'm going to do an exhibit on Mad Honey. Dude, do you want to do some nice. more? Uh, I will do more oh, on look, look Friday. At look, okay. at <laughs> look at him. <laughs> he was scared to take a half a <laughs> teaspoon. Didn't hit like he wanted it to. Now he wants some more. I'm with you, dog. <laughs> That's what's up. All I'm right, joking. man. Much love to y'all. Trying to get Big T to do drugs. So subscribe on YouTube. Do your thing. See y'all next week. Mm -hmm.